uh, familiar familiar names that uh, I I used to meet quite often. So very uh, a very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, thank you for joining this morning session. Uh, I believe that most of us have our own classes and our own uh, tasks and work, but uh, you are taking some time, precious three hours uh, from ten to one uh, to go through this uh, session called Creative Online. Uh, teaching for student engagement. So I really appreciate you joining and um, hopefully um, we can be a very engageful uh, team that uh, you will benefit for the next um, three hours yeah, of this session. Yeah. So thank you everyone. Uh, we actually we had about 30 something who registered, but I believe that perhaps they will join in as they can. Right. So this video is also being recorded, as you can see at the top. Um, in case you need any uh, revision, um, feel free to actually download and relook into the video again. Okay, so um, welcome everyone. I can see that um, as we are talking here, there are more people joining. Okay, so let us just jump straight into the, the session. Yeah, okay, just um, allow me to share my screen. All right, so I believe that you should be able to see. Uh, my PowerPoint. Okay, are you all able to see the slides? Yes. All right. Okay. So, all right. So this morning we will cover on creative online teaching for student engagement. All right. So just let me just um, introduce myself. I'm Dr. Donnie Adams from the uh, faculty of education, right? Um, so among um, the certification that I have received from Microsoft is this four um, certificates. So if you all are interested to actually pursue this um, certification, you can let me know and I can give you extra information on how to pursue uh, the certification. So each of it is a certification by itself. You have to go through two days of uh, two full days of training. Uh, this is especially on Microsoft Office PowerPoint, Microsoft Office Word, uh, um, Access and Excel. So for, this is an optional one. There are many other choices that you can choose um, or you can choose the basic one which is called Access. So basically you need to use for you to be able to get this. So this is Microsoft Office Master Certificate. This is directly from Microsoft Corporation. And each of these course is about six to 800 ringgit, right? Uh, but when I did it in Unisti Malaya, they had the license before. Um, it's about 250, if I'm not mistaken, per module, yeah? Um, now I believe the license has expired um, because they have bought a bulk purchase, yeah? So students can enroll, lecturers can enroll, but I'm not sure whether they will be purchasing a new batch. But if you're interested, you do drop me an email or what, and I can uh, guide you on how to do it. Each of these module, um, you have a two full days of training, plus you have an hour assessment. So you have to sit for an one hour assessment, and that assessment is done by Microsoft themselves. Uh, so it's an online assessment. There will be a Microsoft representative coming to the test center. However, that you are seated, there will be a designated test center. You must sit for this uh, exam for one hour. Um, it's not an open book, it's a closed book thing, and you are supposed to uh, do the online exam on whatever they have taught. So if you pass, uh, you'll be able to get this certificate. So it's actually quite an intensive uh, one hour. Like every minute counts actually uh, for the session. Yeah. So if you're interested, please do let me know. So I'm actually certified in all these four categories and you eventually you complete these four, you will be able to get the grand one, uh, which is the Microsoft Office. Uh, master certification and these are some of the certificates yeah so if you complete that that modules you will get a batch uh, which you is a digital batch which you can share it online in your cv or in your social media and also you will receive this certificate so these are actually gold plated um, these are just soft copies of the certificate but they will actually post the actual certificate to your home right and these are all actually very um, shining goldish color plated um, uh, certificates. Yeah? So it's very much uh, desired, uh, is, is a very much um, uh, sought after certificate. Yeah? So it will definitely enhance our CVs. Uh, so if you're interested in this, 
you can let me know this is the main one the big one uh, which is the microsoft office specialist master so you finish that four modules you'll be able to get this and you can see that in the specialist master they have written what are the modules that you have uh, taken and this certificate is not easily duplicated it can't be falsified it can't be duplicated because you have a unique code here so if you go to this certiport and search for this code here uh, you will be able to see whether the trainer or whatever name is stated here is actually truly certified by microsoft so this is one way to actually verify right um, also as part of the microsoft office certification i'm also a certified microsoft innovative educator so if you are interested to pursue this uh, please let me know i will share the details with you also as well yeah so this certificate is also uh, one that enables you to give um, short trainings under microsoft education right and under the microsoft innovative educator you also have other sub trainings for example you have microsoft sway you have microsoft onenote and then you have microsoft teams so each of these has its own certification by itself and this is from directly from microsoft yeah and you can see that they have a duration and when what date have you completed so microsoft are constantly updating their modules and um, online you know because there's always new things to be updated especially concerning microsoft teams so they will require um, those who have already been certified they will send you updates that you need to undergo more trainings more modules yeah so as you undergo more trainings and more modules you will get more certificates uh, sorry not more certificates you will get an updated certificate so the latest updated one is uh, last year january yeah so you can get more updates on this all right so this morning we will cover actually uh, when i propose to um edx um, I actually proposed for a uh, 10 to 4 p.m. 10 o'clock morning uh, to 4 p.m. Um, uh, workshop, right? Because this workshop will, uh, is actually a very comprehensive. It's a module that I developed uh, for for teaching and training. Um, I've done this module for a few institutions. Lately, I've done it for UCSI. So now we are doing it for University of Malaya. Um, so this uh, module is actually uh, two parts part one and part two right um, so it's 10 to 4 but um, edec actually proposed that instead of running one whole um, day workshop which is 10 to 4 they proposed to actually split it into part one and part two so this morning we will be covering part one okay so this is part one uh, uh, so part one this is the modules that we'll be covering so we'll be looking at on uh, microsoft office online we're looking at OneNote, we're looking at Sway. Uh, we will be also be looking at OneNote for professional learning communities. Uh, professional learning communities is basically a term that we use um, within educators, uh, not involving students. So uh, within management, within educators, right? So we call it professional learning communities. And uh, uh, we're going to look at how to use OneNote within uh, educators group, within us lecturers. And if there's any settings or troubleshoot, we will include that as well. And then this morning, we will also look very detailed into Microsoft uh, OneNote. Okay, we will look at how to create uh, notebooks, how to manage, how to distribute, and how to use OneNote as uh, for our teaching and learning. So this is part one. Uh, from 10 o'clock morning to 1 p.m. will be part one. I will suggest that if you want to know uh, more um, after this workshop, um, you can enroll into part two. Okay, so maybe attack will offer part two soon. Part two will be on this best practices for assignments and quiz. Um, so here I will cover about um, what are the sort of assignments and what are sort of quiz, what are sort of platforms we can use um, to create assignments and quizzes here. And um, we also have rubric, grading rubrics and all this. We also have this is one of the um, uh, my own personalized developed a module creative online teaching with teams so here i'll be showing you um, a variety of online collaboration tools close to 20 collaboration tools interesting activities softwares and tools all free that you can use it to really enhance your teaching and make it a really dynamic classroom and how to engage your students so everyone is inside and also i will share some best practices for online learning and how do we engage students online so this will be the part two module so if you are interested in this uh, perhaps after this workshop uh, we can uh, propose to add um, to perhaps have a part two and we schedule a date um, for this all right okay so any questions so far all this everything one good 
maybe uh, okay at the moment i can all see only names here <laughs> i think it's quite common for our classrooms yeah we can see everyone is here okay now we have 27 27 online yeah okay before we proceed further i would like to um um get a feel of everyone's um um interest this morning yeah before we proceed further so i would like to do a pre session survey a pre session survey um with all of you yeah so this is the link and this is the qr code Okay, this is a link and QR code. So it's a very simple survey. It's only about uh, one minute. Okay, uh, survey. So can you please access this survey? Uh, this is the QR code. You can take your phone and scan it. Your QR code, or you can go to this link. So I will paste this link in the chat. Yeah. Okay, I'll paste this link in the chat. Oops, a little bit big. Yeah. Okay. So the link is in the chat. and the survey is here uh, qr code so can you please complete it is only about 1 minute yeah uh, just for me to get a feel about everyone's interest this morning Okay, so I have one response here. Okay, four so far. Okay, so we have about twenty six here. Twenty six. If you minus myself and minus Uzairi and Umu, it's about twenty five. Yeah, yeah. Twenty four, twenty five. Twenty four, twenty five. Okay. Okay, I have about twelve so far. Okay, I will show you the results. Yeah, so those of us who have completed the survey, I will show you the results. So from this survey, I will know what. weightage um to give for the training this morning uh, which part of the training to prioritize okay uh, because we have three areas that we will cover um so we will look at one node we will look at sway we will look at themes right so from this survey you will give me a feel on uh, which weightage where to prioritize okay i have about 16 now I think we're about maybe about eight or nine more responses pending. Okay, we are at 19 now. Okay, we are 20. Okay, so let's look through um, some of the response. Yeah, we are twenty one. Okay, so describe your. Okay, I'm I'm sure you can see my uh, form. Yeah, you all are able to see the form at the moment. I'm showing a pie chart. Yes, you can. Can okay, ah, all right, good. Okay, so we have twenty two responding. So describe your overall knowledge of Microsoft Office three six five. Um, so I can see that almost. half of our crowd today is at the beginners level and um almost 50 50 yeah so you have intermediate and you also have 
um, beginner ya yeah? almost 50-50 here alright and how frequent do you use the following application alright so one thing good that we see this morning is most of you are using teams ya yeah? you're already familiar with teams you're already using teams um, maybe average usage for teams and then uh, rarely microsoft sway um, only two two are using almost always ya yeah? um, very frequent users most of you rarely use or perhaps never use at all okay never use at all so i think the weightage is going to fall on here uh, microsoft sway and i can see that one node is almost uh, almost there some are always using okay and then once a while all right but i can see that uh, also never and very rarely use is also uh, here yeah so it's quite high all right so here will be the more weightage here will be more weightage microsoft online uh, some perhaps don't really understand what is microsoft online maybe it's a little bit too generic term yeah so microsoft online uh, will be some of the basic um, softwares that we use for microsoft how to collaborate online using microsoft powerpoint word excel all right so these three main thing how do we collaborate using uh, word powerpoint and excel so collaborate online yeah because this software is at the moment we are using most of the time on the individual basis right we do the work and uh, powerpoint we do some presentation work we do some assignments and 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 typing and, uh, and documents and all this but how do we invite other people to join the same document how do we work collaboratively in a team uh, as a team that means every uh, probably about three four five six people can actually access the same document and work on it at the same time okay so this is microsoft office so please rate your interest oh my okay <laughs> so i think rate your interest in the following application almost everyone is interested in almost everything yeah so microsoft teams is also quite high so even though the usage is quite high here um you are also interested in microsoft teams yeah so it's quite high here okay sway uh one note and then uh microsoft online okay so what are some other applications you have used for online teaching okay so we have google meet um yes we have spectrum we have zoom yes you have dropbox okay you have all this good um i wonder who is this which lecturer is this okay then you have google classroom at puzzle quizzes okay google meet quizzes okay also this is also a lot yeah uh, the other applications paddle padlet okay and then whiteboard okay mainly teams all right so you have a uh, few some lecturers rated none uh, that means you have not used not applicable you have not used other applications some put dash here okay so i think that we can see apart from microsoft teams uh, the other uh, platforms that our lecturers use is zoom and also google meet yeah okay so now i got more or less a feel of um, this morning yeah uh, of our participants this morning okay so let me see we are at 26 participants uh sorry 25 uh, participants now okay let's start with uh microsoft teams yeah microsoft teams so basically now what is um uh, where we are now we are all on an online platform called microsoft teams so you all are online now we are using uh, microsoft teams um to for this training yeah we are looking at microsoft teams uh, to, to dial in online and to follow this training. So some of you maybe are not familiar with Microsoft Teams. Some of you are maybe first time uh, using Microsoft Teams. So let me just show you some of the uh, contents of Microsoft Teams uh, just to take you through it. Yeah. So uh, those of you who are already aware about Microsoft Teams and how to use it, uh, please bear with me uh, just to show a very brief overview to most of our lecturers who are perhaps not very familiar with uh, Microsoft Teams. Yeah okay so let me just go through back to this one okay so this morning these are the sort of applications that we will be looking at uh, we will be looking at microsoft sway we'll be looking at um, the microsoft online office documents uh, word we're looking at powerpoint we're looking at excel we will also look into OneNote. Uh, we will also look into teams and we will also look into sway so in Microsoft Office 365 applications, these are all the applications that is available. Uh, but the most commonly used one are those that I've already circled. These are very much 
commonly used, right? Um, and uh, um, so this is what we will cover this morning, all right? Um, so what are the main features of Office 365? I, I sometimes when I ask um, lecturers, they are not aware about um, UM subscribing to Microsoft Office 365. So uh, UM has a, a subscription to Microsoft Office 365, and this is free for us lecturers. And this is also free for our students, uh, UM students. So all of us have access to Office 365. So it's downloadable. You can download the softwares and whatever applications that you will see, um, which I show you earlier here, you can use it. All right. And you can also download. So sometimes when you buy a new laptop, you buy a new PC, right? Uh, one of the things that is lacking in there is the Office, Microsoft Office. So they ask you to uh, uh, buy an uh, original software. Usually the shops will tell you buy 200, 300 Microsoft Office yeah, to go along with your uh, machine that you just bought. But in uh, UM subscription for 365, you can download the software for free. Um, so it's already subscribed to you and you can use it up to uh, five licenses and then you can use it up to um, uh, five devices here as well. Right. So please uh, Take note of this if you are not already aware. Uh, maybe you can also um, spread this news to your students. Yeah. So both staff and students can get um, online versions of Word, PowerPoint, Excel, OneNote, and also you can also download it. Yeah. So uh, for us, um, UM staff, we are very used to um, our UM mail, right? But um, for others, maybe they might be interested in this Microsoft Outlook. So we maybe we don't use Outlook so much because we already have our UM mail, right? So, but Outlook is also available for us. And uh, those of us who are looking to store things, uh, store documents, um, store uh, files and all this, you can have access to OneDrive. So at the moment, um, we have a space allocated to us. It's a cloud-based um, um, storage, one terabyte, one terabyte of OneDrive storage that is available. So you can also access OneDrive and store your documents there as well. Right, so I will suggest you if you have not already done so, maybe you can take advantage of this uh, one terabyte drive storage that is available. But do bear in mind, it's a cloud-based technology, so everything is online. It's all in the cloud, yeah. Um, so it's not available in a thumb drive or hard disk, or or it's not even available in your computer itself. So it's all stored unless you have a duplicate copy, yeah. Then it's available. But most of it is uh, updated and stored online. So our Pusat Technology Maklumat, our IT communication uh, uh, unit are not responsible for any document backup because everything is stored online. So just bear in mind this one. yeah. So what are some of the eligibility and terms? Um, both UM and staff can access. So UM staffs access using UM mail. Um, our students access it using their SISWA mail. Right, so you are eligible. You can use the plan until you graduate or no longer enroll or employed at UM. So it's a, it's more like a permanent thing. Yeah, you can all you you can use it all the time. Yeah, it's not a problem. And um, I would suggest to not share this Office 365 because um, I've also come across students since they have a free 365 plan. Uh, they have five licenses. So when they buy the machine and then a um, few other students um, outside of University Malaya who doesn't have 365, they share the license. Huh? They, they kind of sell it because the shop is selling it for 200. They sell it for 100 ringgit, 50 ringgit, make money out of it. But do bear in mind, your license has your name. So if somebody else were to install your license, that software has your name on that. Right. So you want the you might want to take note about this. Yeah. And then to further uh, information about 365, uh, this is the link. So I will share with you this PowerPoint slides after this workshop so you can take note of uh, some important links as part of this PowerPoint. Okay. So if there's any problems regarding Office 365, some students are not able to access their 365. Yeah? Uh, so if you have any problem, um, staff also is not able to access, you can always go through our um, UM Help Desk. So UM Help Desk is open to both students and staff and they, uh, their turnaround time is quite fast. Uh, within three four days they will already uh, get to your case already okay so you can um, use that yeah so for staffs how do you access um, this is the link you can share it with your uh, students login microsoftonline.com you sign into your account so username will be your username but the only difference is we add the word 365 so our uh, our um mail doesn't have 365 is at 
um.edu.my. But if you want to access 365, we add 365 here. So 365.um.edu.my is the same password we use for our UM mail. So for students, it's the same thing. Okay, students email at the moment, it has at siswa.um.edu.my, but they have to add also the number 365. So siswa365.um.edu.my, the password is the same as their siswa mail. So in case they forgot about their password, you can ask them to um, click the forgot option, forgot password option, get a new password and they are able to log in. So most of the time, our students, they don't really check the CISWA mail. Yeah? They don't really check. So maybe uh, we want to use Office 365 more often, then it's good to get your students familiarized with 365. Okay, so we will start this morning with uh, Microsoft Teams. Yeah. So some of you are already familiar with Microsoft Teams. Um, so uh, perhaps you uh, is a reflective um, um, a lot of things that we cover in Microsoft Teams might be a bit of reflection for you otherwise those of you who are new uh, perhaps you are learning something new this morning okay so before we proceed let's look at a very short video on uh, Microsoft Teams okay just let me just turn on the uh, computer sound yeah Okay, let's view a very short video on Microsoft Teams, yeah? Microsoft Teams is the digital hub that teachers and school leaders have been waiting for. It provides a conversation-based workspace in which teachers and students can experience a personalized, vibrant learning environment, as well as having many of the classroom basics, like assignments, announcements, and notebooks. Ultimately, students learn valuable life skills of collaboration and communication by using Microsoft Teams. It is also the perfect location for working with colleagues on projects, curriculum adoptions, or even whole school initiatives. School administrators can communicate and collaborate with their entire staff in one location. Okay, so that is a very short introduction about Microsoft Teams. Yeah, so just to give you an overview about some of the capability of Microsoft Teams. Um, so here it's a, a channel for us to communicate, for us to collaborate. You can even customize and extend your Microsoft Teams. You can put in so many different applications at the same time. Okay. And if you are aware about WhatsApp and if you're aware about um, Google Meet, it's the best of both worlds. All right. So Microsoft Teams enables you to chat exactly like a WhatsApp group. Um, so you don't have to have two separate application you have a whatsapp group for your class and then you have uh, microsoft teams you can actually do everything in one so you have a microsoft teams application you can chat exactly like a whatsapp so as you can see a picture here a lot of it looks exactly like a whatsapp you can send emoticons and all this and um, at the same time, you can even have a call for an immediate meeting. I will show you later how do we do it if you're not really aware about it yet. And also you can extend. The, if you see the plus sign here, you can also extend and have many other applications incorporated as part of Microsoft Teams. And uh, the best part about Microsoft Teams is you have two in one. You have uh, chat messaging capability and you are able to have online teaching so you can share your screen you can share any files everything under one platform so you don't have so many platforms yeah so there uh, when i was giving this training at um, a few institutions uh, lately ucsi they were so engraved they were so interested in microsoft teams to an extent where they want to discontinue their lms their learning management system yeah they want to discontinue that uh, because they say that uh, they feel that Microsoft Teams is already has everything that they need. Yeah. So if you are aware and you are able to use it very effectively, you will notice that uh, it's, it's a lot more uh, user friendly. Uh, it's a lot more uh, capabilities you can use that. And also here is a screenshot of some of the um, applications that you can import into your own Microsoft Teams. Uh, so you can put it here so that you can access all this application and most of it is free so you can integrate it as part of your microsoft teams okay so basically microsoft teams is to help us to have a very good secure online classroom keep our students remotely engaged and also facilitate remote learning so as part of today's training 
I, I will show you a little bit hands on about how to do, go about Microsoft Teams. But um, I'm also providing you some YouTube links, yeah, step one to step six. So in case that you would like to recall, you would like to reflect, or you have missed certain steps, for example, you can feel free to access all this YouTube. Yeah, uh, this is by Microsoft, not by myself. This YouTube is directly from Microsoft. So you can feel free to access this as a recap on what we have learned um, this morning. Okay, so any questions so far? Are we good to go? Oh, everyone is very quiet. <laughs> Akmal, uh, Akmal, okay, yeah? Yes. Okay, all right. Okay, so let's continue this morning. Yeah? Okay, everyone else is very quiet. Okay, let me just show you an overview. So this is how Microsoft Team works. So I have a few things already created here. Yeah. So those of you uh, who are perhaps uh, familiar with Teams, you will know um, some of these functions. Those of you who are new, okay, but the first thing that you need to uh, do is to access Microsoft Teams, right? So how do we access Microsoft Teams is you have to go and uh, access Microsoft um, uh, online. Yeah, you go to Microsoft online. Okay, this is the this is the link here. So if you're not familiar, I'm going to give you this link. This is the link here. So you can access Microsoft online and all the applications that I've given shown you just now, you are able to see. Okay, so I can see some chat. Okay, that you all are there. So this is the link. Okay, or you can straight away uh, uh, paste here. Okay, so when you go into your Microsoft Office um, by University of Malaya, so you will have this example. Yeah. So here, if you click this um, app launch, uh, sorry, this one, all apps. So you will have all your apps. So you just click down here, yeah, the uh, box here. You will come up with all these applications. So all these applications is available for you. You can use all these applications here, yeah. So for you to access Microsoft Teams, um, you have to click that link that I just show you, all right. And then you have Microsoft Teams here. So you just click Microsoft Teams, okay, and then you are able to access where we are now. So once you click that you will come to this interface. But if you are new to Microsoft Teams, you might not see all these things here because these are things that I've created yeah, uh, for my individual use. So you can create something similar to this uh, for your own classes. yeah. Uh, so in this case, if you want to create a team, right? So first click this one, join or create a team. You have to click this, all right? And then here, create a team, create a team. This one is for your students. Yeah, later I will show you um, about this. But now we want to create a team. So you just create a team here. Okay, and then you have few options. Some of you might only have this one option. Yeah, um, it depends on your license subscription. Like for me, I'm having uh, advanced license, so I have many other options. Some of you might only have one option. This one option is fine. Uh, it's no problem. Yeah, it's not a worry if you don't have access to others. So you click class. All right, and then now you can name the class. So, for example, your class is um, according to your coursework, maybe your course code. Okay, so for example, um, I'm going to put PIC 1006 uh, applications in computer, uh, for example. So, you can also customize this according to your course code or any other names that you want name. Okay, and then put your course code, click next. So, when you click next, it's creating the theme. All right. So now if you have your this is the hard working way, yeah? the hard working way, hard working way is you as the teacher, you enter in all your students email one by one. This is a hard working way. OK, I will just uh, if you want to know the hard working way, then you just enter in. OK, for example, I saw uh, Dr. Vinodini. Is now. So let's say if Dr. Vinodini is my uh, student. Just now I'm going to add her. Vinodini. So you can add your students one by one. All this is based on their 365. Yeah? So you just type your name. Uh, you can select and add them one by one. This is the hardworking way, right? If you want the uh, simple or shall I say the, the lazy way also can, all right? So you just skip this step. Just skip, click skip. Now, if you click skip, you will notice that your Teams is already created here. Your teams is already created here. So now you can give your student the code. You need to give them a code for them to join because Nobody is in this group, only yourself. You as a teacher, only you are in this group. So you want to invite your students to come into this class uh, to be part of it. So how do I do it? You can click the three dots here. Okay, and then click 
manage team click manage team okay so now when you click manage team you will notice that who is the owner of this group is you and you have the zero members and guests so now i want to invite my students to come into this group so how do i do it i click settings okay and then team code settings team code so click this click generate so when you click generate microsoft is going to give you a very unique code this mvaf 28y so this is the code right so now if you put this code you are able to join my group uh, you yourself are able to join my group so for your students um, the little bit tedious will be to create the teams first right uh, this is the difficult part where you create the teams and ask them all come to join here and all this give them the code the difficult part so it's a little bit tedious in the beginning but once you get everything set up it's going to be a very breeze for you right so i will suggest that um, just be patient in the first part um uh, after that you will have a really smooth classroom you don't have to always create a link you know so some lecturers i noticed that when they have online class they are creating the link again and again every time sending the link tell the class okay this is a link for this week this is a link for this week you don't have to do that yeah um, um in microsoft teams you just one click the button everyone meet yeah i will show you a little bit so now this is the code for other people your students to join so how are they going to join the same thing give them this microsoft link that i gave you in the chat earlier they will come to this portal ask them to click teams right once they click teams they will also come to this interface right but their part they are going to click join can you see at the bottom there's join or create a team so click this part okay they will enter here join a team with a team code so earlier there was a code they must enter the code here. So when they enter the code, then they will join this class. PIC, uh, uh, the class that you have created. So this is how we invite students. This is how we create, and this is how we invite students to join the classroom using the class code. So rather than you manually putting one by one, uh, this is more like the shortcut or the lazy way okay for you to invite yeah uh, so if you have a group of 100 students yeah i don't think you want to spend your time uh, putting their emails one by one yeah because first you have to get their email so this is another way how we can do it okay so i'm done about how to create a team and how to join a team and how to generate a team code all right so is everyone clear on this part can follow maybe if you are clear maybe you can put in the chat or something so that yes clear excellent all right okay so now let's go back to microsoft teams now this is the teams group that we have created yeah so some lecturers were asked um if i want my students to do uh, work according to groups in teams so how do i do it um i want them that means uh, the group work i want like group one group two group three group four right i have uh, maybe four or five students in group one four or five students in group two so i want to divide them according to group but uh and i want them to work within that group and i don't want other people to see what work are they doing so that uh, group is only limited to the four or five students only they can see and they can work so this is something that we create called channels okay so in this group that i just created here you click these three dots okay you have add channel add channel so i'm going to click add channel okay so now maybe you have group one okay and whatever uh, uh name you can put here you can also put group one you can also divide this according to the class week yeah so you have week one what topic you have week two what topic so you can even create channels based on a topic if you don't want to do that that's fine uh one application here will do um in case you want your students to follow by weekly weekly uh, week one this is all the contents for week one week two is all the content something like our spectrum where you can divide uh, according to topics you want to do that you can also create this is the same way yeah or you want your students to work collaboratively in groups this is also the same way so for example i'm going to group uh, create group one okay don't forget to change this privacy change this to private so private is what accessible only to a specific group of people within the team 
So here you are going to specify who is the one that have access to this channel. So I'm going to put private here. Okay, I'm going to click next. Okay, now this is the part where you have to add the student. So you as the lecturer have to add. So maybe about three or four or five students per group. So you type all their emails here. Okay, for example, I'm going to type my email. Okay, here. Okay, add. Click add. Okay. All right. So I haven't added yet. Now first, you have to add inside. Then only you can add the person in the channel. Yeah. So otherwise, you see it's coming out something went wrong. So the person has to be added in the teams before you add the person in the channel. Otherwise, you get something error. But once you already added members, you give them code, add, you won't get this error. Yeah. So you just add all the students you want. Then click done. Done. You will notice that a, a channel has been created. Group one, and you see there's a lock icon. So if you see your group one here doesn't have a lock icon, means you have not set it to private, right? That means anyone from uh, this class can see what other groups are doing. So make sure there's a lock icon. So lock icon, you as the lecturer and you as your students are the only one can see whatever activity that is done in the group. So you can create as many groups as you want. So you want group one now. Now I want to create other groups. Just keep on creating channel. You can create as many groups as you want. All right. So this is on creating channels in Microsoft Teams. Okay. How to divide it according to classes, how to divide it according to groups. Okay. All right. So are we good so far on this? Okay. Yes. Bagus. Bagus. Yes. Excellent. All right. So let's. Okay, now the other part I would like to show you all is this part. So here, when you go to PIC, uh, once you created your class, right, at the top here, at the top here, you have posts, you have files, and then you have this plus sign. So how you can use Teams as a WhatsApp, huh? like a WhatsApp. So here you can just click uh, new conversation. Now you can just type uh, something. Um, hi, students. Okay, uh, class will start at 6 p.m. today, right? For example, yeah. So once they have downloaded the Teams mobile app, so you can also download a Teams mobile app, yeah. So in is available in App Store, is available in um, um, Google Store, uh, sorry, in uh, Play Store, is available in Apple Store. So they can also download that, yeah. Um, so if they download that, they will get notification exactly like our WhatsApp. Okay, otherwise they will have to be glued to their computer when they on their computer, then only they will see the notification. So I will suggest you encourage your student to download a Microsoft Teams application. So it works exactly like the WhatsApp. You will have a notification. You have a message from uh, Michael in Microsoft Teams. So, for example, now I posted a message. They will get a notification in their mobile uh, that they have a message. So when they click the message, this is the message. Hi, students. Class will start at 6 p.m. And you can notice that you can put a lot of other emoticons here. Right. So you want to create a new conversation. You can even put uh, emoticons here. Different, different emoticons you can use. You can uh, use GIF. So GIF is a picture that has motions. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, here, this is how I feel this morning. For example, uh, this is how I feel this morning. Let's say uh, this is what you want to put to your students. See, so they will get something like, wow, teacher feels. Uh, my lecturer feels this is how I feel this morning. Uh, so you can even use GIF, different, different GIFs. You can also attach your document. So if you click attach here, okay, you can even attach documents from your computers or you already have in one drive or if you have it in other channels, uh, if you already have other teams created and you want to take the same file, you can also browse within Microsoft Teams uh, or you can upload within your computer. So if you have PowerPoint, you have Word, you have Excel, all these PDF, you can also upload from your computer. So you can use emoticons here. You can use GIFs, okay? And also you can use stickers. So all these are different, different stickers that you can use um, to engage your student. So one of the things I always ask my students is uh, when, when I teach them online to see whether they are really engaged online is, I will tell them, okay, so do you all understand what I'm, um, I'm teaching here? Find me an emoticon that says cool. Cool. So can you see if you hover your micro, uh, your icon, your mouse over the icon, you will notice that there is a word there, cool. So you notice there's a word called surprise. So I will tell them, 
um, let's say 15 minutes into the teaching, I'll tell them to test whether they are online, whether they are following me. Okay, do you all understand what I'm teaching? Find the emoticon that says cool. So they all have to find. You have to click the emoticon and go to cool. So if they don't give me a cool icon, I know that they are not online. Uh, they just on the, the computer and they're doing something else. Uh, maybe they on computer, they off their uh, camera and uh, mute their microphone and they go something and doing something else. Yeah. So this is the way. Uh, there you can see. So I know Helmi is online. So I ask, can you find the emoticon that says cool and click cool? So Helmi has just click cool. So I know that Helmi is online. Uh, so the rest of you, this is a way how we can gauge our students whether they are engaged online or not. Yeah. So you can find also if you don't want emoticon, you can also find GIF. Okay, so find me a GIF, for example. See, all of the GIFs also has its own label. So you can ask them, uh, give me a GIF. Okay, if you are understood what I'm teaching, give me a GIF. If you understood what I'm teaching, give me a sticker. Uh, so they will tell you. So they, you can either ask them to specifically look for the sticker or they can uh, send you a sticker so you know that they are actually online. So these are some of the minor, minor things that I do that I know that students are online. They are actually following me, not just owning their screen. And then I'm teaching and I'm asking, are you all there? Are you all there? You know, can you hear me? You know, because sometimes this is the exact uh, environment where we have. Uh, we only have all of their names here. We don't, we can't see their face. Yeah. And one of the reason why is they say, oh, low bandwidth, low internet. So if your classroom is small, uh, less than 15, um, uh, I will always encourage to actually on your camera, turn on your camera. So ask the student itself, set a ground rule from the very beginning. Okay, uh, all classes will turn on camera. So then in a way, you know that they are there. Okay, but if you have a large classroom, there is going to be a big of a challenge. So this is some ways that you can engage and know that they are online. Okay. So this is about how to attach file, how to send emojis, GIFs, and stickers, and all this. Yeah. Another way you can do it is you can add a plus sign here. So let's say if you attach some files, yeah, some PowerPoint slides and all this, you can just click files, okay, and you can access all your files here. Yeah? At the moment, I can't see any files because I never upload anything. So once you have upload some files, you can check it here. And then here, if you click this plus sign, right? you are accessible to many, many other applications. So these are all the applications that is compatible and usable with Microsoft Teams. So you can see why they call it Microsoft Teams. It is a collaborative platform because you can use all this and some of the basic PDF, Word, PowerPoint, all this can be used. You can even link uh, YouTube to uh, Microsoft Teams as well. Uh, so all the applications are all here. Uh, you can even access. So you want to link Spectrum, you can even link Spectrum. So put website here, click website, you can link Spectrum to uh, Microsoft Teams. So this is how we um, add third-party apps. Yeah. Uh, so if you would like to know what other third-party apps that will be interesting for our students, um, that will be on part two, uh, which I showed you this morning. Yeah? We will have a part two session. So you can ask EDEC um, if you all are interested, then maybe we can have a part two. Now, coming back to Microsoft Teams, the final part um, is called um, 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 some of the basic features here. You can see at the top here, uh, some of you, your Microsoft Teams, this bar here, yeah, this bar, uh, the red color leaf icon here might be in the middle. Yeah? If your uh, bar is in the middle, means that your Microsoft Teams is not updated. So you have to update your account, right? If your bar is at the top right here, your leaf button is at the top right then no need to worry. So if you happen to have your leaf button here in the middle, please let me know. I will show you very quickly how to update your Microsoft Teams. Okay. All right. So I think Sarah has just put in the chat. At that, I like to request part two. Okay. <laughs> so maybe at the end of this uh, workshop, you all can request. We can request together. Yeah. Okay. So some of the basic functions in Microsoft Teams, you can see at the top right here. This is our participant. So if you click here, you are able to see who is the participants that is following the uh, meeting now, okay, or this class now. So all their names are here. All their names are here. You can follow. Uh, you can see who are there, okay. And then here will be the chat. If you click this, you are able to access the chat, all right. And here is what I showed you earlier in the main interface. Here is the same thing. Uh, while during the meeting, you also can attach documents. You can put some smiley icons here, uh, emoji icons. Eh? You can use GIF. You can use your sticker. So the students don't have to go to the other window, the other application. They can use the chat within here. So like while I'm teaching now, I can say, 
put all the cool icon. So they have to go to emoji and find the cool icon. So when they put here, that means I know they are following the class, right? And then here, another useful feature is you can also like the comment. Okay, for example, now uh, Sarah has said, Adek, I would like to request part two, right? So another useful thing is you can tell to your students, put a question in the chat, for example, uh, or maybe you ask them a question. Okay, so uh, can you give me an answer based on this question? So let's say you give a question to your student. Um, how do you feel today? Uh, example, uh, and then all of you type. How do you feel today inside? I feel happy. I feel sad. Whatever the answer is. Now you can tell to your student. Now go through the answer. So this is the chat here. Go through the answer and find the answer that you like best. So for example, this answer, I like this answer best. They can also do a reaction based on this. So I'm going to like this comment. So now you can see two people has liked this comment. So if you take your mouse and hover over it, you can see there is the names that has liked this comment. So you can see Amalina has liked, myself has liked, uh, Leong has liked, uh, Shazrael has liked. So you, this is how we can engage students online as well. So just ask the question and ask them to post the answer there. So they can go online and then you can tell them, okay, you can give me a reaction. So which one do you like or which one um, you can even change it a little bit, which one uh, uh, you can smile on the comment or you, you are surprised or even you are sad. Okay, that means you never anticipate or you are angry. So you can use this different, different reaction here for so students can react. So rather than them just listening to you and uh, talking, you can get them to engage just by using this chat. So in Google Meet, uh, you don't have such, you don't have emoji and all this. Yeah, even in Zoom also are uh, very difficult. But Microsoft Teams, uh, you have everything here. So you can use uh, emoji, you can attach document, you can put GIF, you can put sticker. So this makes it really dynamic. Uh. So if you know how to use it very carefully, uh, this is one way uh, where it's going to be effective to you as an educator and your students also cannot stray. Uh, they know that you are on top of things like for example now if i ask you a question how do you feel today all of you have to put your response i'm going to ask you next question can you like the comment which you feel most relatable to you so if anyone answered happy uh, okay happy so for example this one at that i like to request part two seven people has like ah uh, so it's easy for me so i can just screenshot this and send to umu later and tell umu i uh, got eight people nine people has liked this part uh, so i think we need to have a uh, part two you see so it's very easy yeah so this is how we can create engagement, all right? Now, another useful feature is raise hand, okay? So you can ask your student, if you are having a question, if you have a question you would like to ask, you can raise hand. So when you click this raise hand, you go to the show participants, okay? You will see the raise hand here. Uh, the icon will be raised hand. Some of the icon can also be visible here, okay? If any of the names here have raised a hand, I can also see a, a name here and raise the hand, okay? So sometimes this is, uh, I can see Afikas uh, has also raised the hand, yeah? So you can tell your student to on and off the um, application. So one way I can ask the student is, for example, if you understand whatever that was just presented, raise your hand. Ah, so they all have to click and raise their hand. So they know that I'm always keeping track. I'm always uh, uh, seeing whether they are really online or not, uh, whether they are really engaging. So you can use different, different techniques. So one of the uh, techniques here is not necessary just to ask question, it's just to see whether they are online. So if you understand what was just presented, okay, raise your hand. Uh, so if you, uh, if you have a question, uh, raise your hand. So this is one way you can use, yeah? Now, another useful function is this one, more actions. So if you click more actions, right, you have this together view, right? So if you want to take a, a photography, you can take a very nice photography, yeah, together view. So for example, if you go to, um, uh, let me go to Google, let me just show you, yeah. You can only see that one is uh, if you all are activated using your video, yeah, but uh, you all are not using your camera. so. Uh, we cannot use the together view. So if you activate your together view, let's say everyone owns their camera. This is something that you can view. So this is together view. So it looks like all of you are seated in an auditorium. So um, one of the things that I do for my classroom is I ask them to turn on their camera. If it's a low classroom, uh, about 15 students and below, I will ask them to turn on their camera and I can see them continuously like this. So they will be continuously online with their faces like this. Right. So I know that they are online. So you can view all students in one window like this. Right. So rather than seeing names here, OK, you can see all in one video. So, for example, I'm going to go to 
together mode. I'm going to click this, more actions, together mode. So if I click together mode, ah, now you can see only me. Only me and uh, another student is here, right? So if all of you activate your camera, then all of you can also be online together. So you can see all your lecture uh, students here. So I will also ask, eh, you see, another student has just joined. Ah, right? So if you're on your camera, okay, you, you can have this uh, as a useful classroom teaching. Yeah? So you can ask your students on your cameras, okay? And then you can see all of them online here. All right? So this is another way you can use Teams to engage the students. So if you don't want to get a view, close it, okay? Uh, and go back to gallery. Click gallery. Okay, you will go back to the normal feature, yeah? Another uh, things that students like to do is background effect. So if you click this one, go to apply background effect, all right? So here you can change your visual. So some of our lecturers are still not sure how to change their visual background. Yeah? So at the back is actually not uh, my house or anything. I'm not on the spaceship or anything. It's just something that I uploaded, yeah? So you can see I uploaded a smiley. I went to Google and I find a smiley. So I can even upload this. I click apply. Ah, now you see. I've changed the application to two thumbs up. Okay, so this was a conference that I had earlier. So I uploaded the backdrop. Now I click apply. You can see the backdrop has changed, right? So this is the one that I found online. So now it's changed. So you can change different, different visual backgrounds here. If you don't like this background, you can always go online and search um, uh, Microsoft Teams cool backgrounds, for example. Yeah, and then you just download the picture and then you upload. So you click add new here and then you upload your picture, then it will come here, all right? So this is how you can change your uh, background settings, okay? And, and and make it really nice and interesting, right? rather than people seeing your uh, home, for example, or your things at the back in your home, for example, yeah? All right, another thing that you can do is perhaps uh, turn on this called meeting notes. Meeting notes, okay? So now when you turn on meeting notes, you can even take notes during a meeting. So I'm going to turn on meeting notes, take notes. Okay, so it's going to load and open a uh, like a small notepad for you. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. Meeting notes. So now while during teaching, you can also take notes here. Okay, meeting now. So you can even take notes. So this is quite useful if you want to take notes. Huh? Actually, it's supposed to appear here. Let me see, take notes. Oh, it's coming here. Okay. So you can even take notes during meeting if you want it, yeah. But bear in mind that whatever notes that you take here is visible to everyone. Your students all can see. So if you're doing a presentation in the class and students are presenting and you are taking marks for them, uh, bear in mind that they can actually see what you're writing in the marks, yeah. So you be careful on that part, all right. Um, and then here you have the uh, uh, camera mode. So it's either on and off and then you have the mute here and then you have the screen sharing so when you click this you have a bar at the bottom right so you can screen share for example you have this one so this is the example that you have when you click that uh, uh, screen sharing you will have few options here i will always suggest to use this option desktop screen one okay desktop screen one because you have few options you have windows you have powerpoint and all this i will always suggest to use this so that it's easy for you to navigate all right so this part yeah uh, share options. So this is how you share screen. All right. And uh, the final part is uh, once you have already created the teams and you already added all your um, students inside. All right. Uh, let's say class is on today, um, Monday, for example, 6 p.m. Right. So instead of always creating a link again and again and again, you as the teacher, you can only just click this and then click meet. So one button, just click meet everybody comes uh, online so you click meet you will get a button something like this okay so i'm going to go to here this one so make sure that you click this one and all your students only click join so your students don't have to click huh? your students don't have to click this meet button only you as the teacher one person click meet button so when you click meet you will get a bar like this your students will be able to see this bar ask all of them to just click join so when they click join all of us are in the meeting so you don't have to always go to calendar create the link again create the link again you know it's a bit tiresome huh? uh, another way you can do is do it concurrent lah. there's a, another option called concurrent weekly you can create a weekly there is another option if you go to calendar and create it okay how to do that is quite simple um here you go to your group that you created here okay and then uh click this one this three dots eh, sorry here 
beside the meet here, click schedule a meeting. So when you want to create uh, uh, a meeting with your class, just enter in the title. So maybe week one, week one session. Okay. And then here you put all the dates and all this and then here. So you want to repeat every weekday, daily, weekly. You can even put it this way. Yeah. But the easiest way will be uh, meet now. Meet now is the most fastest and easiest way. So I always suggest to use meet now. All right. So that is the overview about uh, Microsoft Teams. So we are done on Microsoft Teams. You all have any questions on this? We are going to move on to the next one. No questions. Okay, so those of you who are uh, not very familiar with Microsoft Teams, one, hopefully. One question. Yeah, yeah. Um, do we have to import the, uh, the, the just now you were, you were telling about the together view. Do we have to import the apps? What do you mean what? import the apps? Yeah. Uh, the together view. Right, right. Can you get it from the teams directly? You can. Yeah. It's already yeah. So if I so click right. three dots, mm -hmm. you have together view here. Okay. So it's already available here. Uh, because uh, the my three dots do not uh, uh, will, uh, does not have that button. Does not have uh, together. Sajarato. Yes. Okay. Uh, perhaps because the license is A one. Uh, uh, for all academicians in UM, uh, by standard, the uh, Microsoft Teams is uh, A1 license. So, uh, if you need uh, to be upgraded to A3 so that you can see the together mode, maybe you can email to Adet and we'll send the request to PTM. Okay, that'll be all good. Right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. So, what uh, Miss Umu just explained earlier, uh, some of you might have functions that is not available, like example, the together view, yeah? Um, because Microsoft have three types of license. We have A1, we have A3, and we have A5, right? Um, the ones that is free is A1 license, uh, which all UM lecturers and students are having. Uh, the one that you have to subscribe and pay a little money is A3. And then the advanced version is A5, which also is a paid um, uh, license, right? But if you have an A3 license, it's more than sufficient, more than enough, yeah? So if you have some function that you don't have and you find that you, you like it, then you can, of course, like what Ms. Umu says, uh, contact EDEC and they will give you the upgrade to A3 license. That is only if you require, yeah? But you, most of the time, A1 is more than sufficient, yeah? But there might be some features that you are not able to access. All right. Um, I have some questions in the chat here. Um, OK, what is uh, my desktop is cameraless. Do we need to install together view? Uh, very rewarding. OK, the, 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 the new digital. Therefore, last year, this year is transformative. I did turn on the camera during examination. My question is finding the right momentum to engage students online. OK, and then no need, but you need minimum number of participants. Okay, recording, no question. Okay, if we are always assigned a different group of students, meaning the group changes frequently, is it necessary to create a group? Can we invite the students as guests? I'm also concerned about the bandwidth as apparently students with poorer connection have trouble joining. Okay, so if you have different, different groups, okay, um, I will suggest that you can always maintain different channels, right? Um, another way is um a little bit tedious is maybe you can go to group one for example click the three dots here manage channels manage channels so you don't have to always create 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 channels you can add member and you can remove member so if you add member you can add member and then if they are already inside here you want to remove they will have an option for you to remove so you can also uh, play around with this uh, on a consistent basis if you like to maintain the groupings and add and drop students according to every week Okay. All right. So that's it. Uh, we are done with Microsoft Teams. Okay. So I hope that all of you are clear on uh, Microsoft Teams. Okay. Let's go through the next one. This morning, we are going to run through OneNote. Okay. Uh, OneNote is a digital notebook, digital no notebook that is available uh, within Microsoft Teams and within Microsoft 365, which you can use it um, for your 
uh, classroom teaching and learning. So I find one one note is actually quite useful and quite interesting. Yeah. So if you have a computer now, um, I would suggest that you can do this one note with me. Yeah? You can do it together uh, so that you have hands on practice. Uh, because it's always good to have hands-on practice. Um, you do it together, then you can ask me some questions uh, if you have any questions, okay? So I will guide you as we do it together, yeah? So what are we going to cover about OneNote this morning is, uh, we're going to look at how you can organize the One Notebook and how you can find materials within uh, notebooks. You can also create, add, share pages, share contents, and we all can also... Uh, utilize a digital ink and yeah? digital ink is basically you can write lah. you can write and you can draw within uh, one notebook okay and then replay features within uh, one note application so this will be our uh, learning objectives yeah uh, for this morning on uh, one note so one note is actually very useful okay if you want to uh, you can use one note for research teams you can also use for classroom collaboration if you want to manage information share notes um, and then you want to have some reflective writing, journaling, everything can be done within one note. Okay, so uh, before we proceed further, it's very important for us to take note uh, these four sections in one note. Yeah, four sections. So there are four sections in one note. Microsoft will constantly remind you about this. Yeah, so be cautious and be careful where you post information. For example, if you want to post information in collaboration space, um, in OneNote, yeah, you have all the steps there. Collaboration space, content library, teacher only, student number, you have that four section in OneNote. So if you want to post information in collaboration space, take note that who can edit. Both educators can edit, lecturers can edit, students can also edit. So if you want to post information where students cannot edit, then this is not a space. Uh, let's say you want to post lecture notes or what and you don't want them to edit. This is not the space. Coll <clears throat> collaboration space is a space where students can collaborate together. Okay, edit together. This is the space. Yeah. Content library is where teachers can edit the content. Students can only view. So let's say if you have lecture notes and you want students to only read, you don't want them to edit, this will be the section, content library. Okay, then you have teacher only section. This is your private section. So if you have any notes you want to take in the future, anything you want to do in the future, uh, you can edit. Uh, um, you can put any notes. Students cannot view. So let's say if students is doing a presentation and you're taking down some note uh, marks and notes and all this, this is the section. Okay, where students cannot view, only you can edit. And this is the student notebook. So if you have a classroom of 10 students, each student will have their own notebooks. Okay, this is a private space for each student. Teachers can edit, you as an educator, you can edit, and students can only edit their own notebook. They cannot edit their friend's notebook, huh? only their own notebook. So each student that you have added in the class, each will have their own notebook. So these are four important sessions. Yeah, um, uh, Please take note of this, very, very important. Yeah, Because there have been some instances where the lecturers go and post in, uh, for example, content library, yeah? And then, eh, sorry, uh, yeah, content library, they go and post the student's presentation mark where the students call can view the presentation marks. Yeah? So this is not the space. This you, If you want to post presentation marks and you don't want students to see, it, it's only for your own note taking and reference, then it's teacher only, post it in teacher only. Okay, let's go through one note. Yeah? So to go through one note is quite simple. I'm going to go to creative online teaching. This is the group that we all are in now. Okay. Um, let me set up the class notebook. Lah. So let's say you already created the themes, right? You already have the course code. Okay, maybe I don't use this. Maybe I use this one. Oh, okay, sorry. I will use this because all of you are inside here. Okay, so if you have created a themes, you already added the members, you will have this introduction uh, page where you have upload class materials, set up class notebook. So first thing we do is set up class notebook. So click this. All right, and then you will see a new tab has been created on top, class notebook. All right, now you ask you again, set up, click again, set up one close one class notebook, blank notebook. So let's say if you have other themes that you created or you have other notebooks you have created before, you want to use the same template, then you take this option. If you want to start blank, a new one, click this one, blank notebook. So you click blank notebook, you will come to the four reminders earlier that I showed you. These are the four columns, the four reminders. So just click next. Okay, no need to change all of this. Just leave it as it is. Click create. 
create. Okay, so once you create, you will come to this one, getting your class notebook ready. Okay, so this might take a little bit of loading time. Yeah? It depends on how big of a class you have and also how steady your internet is. All right. Okay, so just a moment, let the class notebook ready, getting your class notebook ready. Okay, so maybe while waiting, uh, the rest of you, maybe you, you will like to also join in, yeah? You also want to go and create your own class. So for you to create your own class notebook, uh, join, if you have a team already ready, you can do that, or you can create a brand new team, like what I showed you just now, okay? Click a brand new team and um, you can create a class notebook within that team. Okay, so I think it's taking a little bit long here. Sorry lah, internet is not really strong. I had some issues with TM. So hopefully this thing works. Okay, let me just try here also as well. Uh, Okay, so it's still turning. Ah, okay. So now we have made some progress. Um, it's still loading. Okay, so now you have successfully created your uh, class notebook. Yeah. So this is some welcome message for you. Okay. Now, one of the important things that you want to take note is the navigation pane. Right. So this is not a single page. Yeah. A notebook that has many, many pages. It's like your digital notebook. Okay, so one thing that you want to take a look, uh, take note of is this one. So if you hover your mouse here, it's called navigation pane. So if you click navigation pane here, okay, now you will notice that you have the four items that I told you earlier. You have collaboration space, you have content library, you have teacher only, and each of your students have a class notebook. So you can see that all of us are online here. Each of you have your notebook. Okay, so I can see as a teacher, all of you have your notebook. Now, if I click this drop down menu, okay, I can see uh, this is the handouts, class notes, homework and quizzes. All these options each of you have. You have four this. So you cannot see each other's one. Huh? You only can see your own notebook. So depends on how many students you have a class. If you have 30, then you have 30 students name here. All right. So please remember, you have to add them into the Microsoft team first. Yeah, add them inside that using a team code. Once they join, then click the class notebook. Otherwise, their name won't appear here. All right. So now you have all your names here. Now, um, what we're going to do is we are going to click a section. So as you see at the bottom here, there is a tab called add section. Okay. So now I'm going to click add section and it's going to ask me to title my section name. So maybe I'm going to call it uh, one note training. Click OK. OK, so now you will notice that it appears here. Under the welcome session, yeah, one note training, all right? So now you have your section created. OK, now I want to click add a page, add a page, yeah? So now you have, if you create a section, automatically a page is created for you. So you see I'm title page, the thing is empty here. OK, so maybe you want to type something here. Okay, so uh, maybe here let's type uh, uh, one one note uh, notes. For example, one note notes. Now, when you click anywhere else, you click the navigation pane. You will see that your section is here, one note training, and this is your page, one note notes. So this one is exactly you know when you have your um, diary, you have your diary, or you have your um, uh, what do we call this a planner. You have a planner and then each of the side, if you see a book, you have different, different section, different, different color, green, blue, yellow is similar to this. So this is your section. OK, this is a green section. You can add as many section as you want. You can even change the color. OK, I'll show you a little on. Yeah. So now you create a section. Now this is the pages, the pages inside the section. So now I have page one, one note. Uh, notes so you can type as many things as you want so for example if you click here now you can type as many things as you want here okay so now what i want to type inside here it it, it, it depends on you you can insert a picture for example okay let me see yeah um, 
let me type something. Okay, this is a cool notebook. Okay, so here you have an ability to type text. So you can type as many text as you want. This is a cool notebook. All right. Now you can also um, insert picture. Right. So if you click here, insert. Okay. So when you click insert, you have insert picture. So you click picture here. Now you can search either picture from uh, your file. You have a camera or you can find a picture online. So now I'm going to click from online. Okay, and it only links to Bing, yeah, because Bing is under Microsoft. Um, it doesn't link to Google. So you can even find a picture in Google and then insert it manually here. Okay, click picture, insert from file lah, if you find uh, your own picture or from Google. But if you want to find within Bing, uh, it's also um, similar to Google from online, find a picture. Okay, this is a cool notebook. So I'm going to search for notebook picture now. Okay, so something is coming out like this. Okay, maybe this one. Okay, so this picture, I'm going to click this and then I'm going to click the uh, double click. You'll come up here. So you see, uh, you have an ability to put a text. You have an ability to also include a picture. Okay, so just a moment. Uh, it's inserting the picture. Okay, now you can see a picture has been inserted. So a notebook picture has come out here, right? Now you can also insert a link. Let's say that I want to type something. Okay, so dear students, uh, dear students, uh, please click this link to read more on how to use OneNote. For example, yeah. So now you want to insert a link, right? So you can even insert a link. So if you go here okay now you go to the um, website that you want to put maybe one note one note microsoft okay so for example one note microsoft this is the link that i want to share to my students yeah so copy the the link copy the url i'm going to go back to my here okay address this is the address that i put display text link insert text link insert I put the address insert so now you can see that there is a link that has been created so now if the student were to hover over it okay they are able to click the link they are able to go to the link okay if you don't want to put this you can also put it the other way yeah you don't want to put the text you only want to put the whole thing you can also put like this put the whole link okay if you don't want them to click the link eh, you, you want to have the whole url you can also this. So you can see now we have inserted a text. We have inserted a picture. We have also uh, another thing that you can do is also insert audio, right? So let's say that you want to leave a note. Uh, you want to leave a note to your students uh, in audio. So you can click audio. All right. And you can see that the audio is recording. Okay. Audio is recording now. So I'm going to, you, you see the record button, the stop, there's play and all this. Now, if I click stop, okay. So that means it's already stopped recording. Just now it was recording my voice. Yeah. So now I click stop. Now you can see the MP3 is already recorded. So in case you have any verbal instruction to give to your students, this is how they just click this one. Okay. And they click play. They can hear your voice. Okay. So this is how we insert MP3 um, audio into your one note now some of you might find that uh, uh, maybe it's too boring to just put text here lah. maybe it's too boring to put text maybe you want to insert something else say i want to insert emojis for example so go to insert you can even put emojis so emojis are here so you can play around with emojis ah for example you can put this one you can put this one okay so you can make it a bit interesting lah. don't make it a bit too dull okay so you can even put his or even if you have a note, for example, you can just copy and paste it here. If you have any notes in uh, word form, you can just copy and paste it here. It will also appear. Yeah, no need for you to type one by one. OK, so this is a cool notebook. So, for example, uh, this one, I'm going to copy this one. Something that I found online. OK, now I'm going to go here and I'm going to paste it into uh, Microsoft OneNote. You can also do that. Can you see? So it comes out very nicely, the the exactly, you know, like how it is emphasized. 
So you can go to any website, copy paste anything and you have your uh, digital notes here. It's all created here. So you can even put some emojis. And maybe if you don't like this white color, you can also change the background. If you don't like white color, you can also change the background. So you just have to right click. Okay, what have made? Ah, let me just click this. Mm, they have removed that option already. Oops. Draw. View. Yep, sorry. So if you want to change the page color, there's, they have updated it. Yeah, you want to uh, change the page color, go to view, page color. Go to view, page color. So now you can even change the page color. So maybe I want to change it to purple. So now you notice that it's changed to purple. If I want to change it to maybe uh, red, so now it's changed to red. So you can have different pages. So if you go back to your navigation pane, this is my page one, right? Page one, you can go as as bottom as you want. Huh? There's no limitation. As you type, it will go down, down, down. So maybe this is page one, one note page. Now I want to create another page. So just click add page and then put another page here. Okay, so maybe uh, one note uh, page two, for example. Yeah, so now you can type exactly how it is. Now, if you notice, it comes out one note, one note page two. So this is within one section. You can create as many section as you want. You can create as many pages as you want. Okay, so this is the useful section. Yeah, okay. Any everything okay so far? Can follow? Okay, I see some question here. Uh, does it have these auto breakout rooms like Zoom for brainstorming? Um, Dr. Lee, are you talking about uh, you can do breakout rooms using Microsoft Teams, yeah? but that will be um, using A3 license. Yeah? You can do this. Okay. Uh, one note, no. Yeah, one note, no. Uh, one note notebook, no. Only uh, breakout rooms uh, similar to Zoom, you can use using Microsoft Teams. Um, yeah, so, yeah, but I'm not talking about, 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 about one note, just like in general. general. Can. Also, yeah. Yeah. can. You can use using Microsoft Teams. Uh, maybe I can share the link after this, yeah? how to use. Once you upgrade to your E3 license, you can use this quite uh, simple to turn off that, uh, turn on that. Okay. Now, uh, Suba has asked, can we use maths option? Yes, yes, there is maths option. So if I go back to my OneNote here, um, for example, this text here, yeah? if I want to put a maths option, insert, okay, and then maths. So you have maths options here, insert, maths. So now you can click maths and then you can turn on and you can write um, the formulas that you want inside here. Okay, Suba? Okay, yes, yes, thank you. All right. Okay, so can follow so far, yeah? All right, now uh, what we can do is, let's say that this is the notes that you have done, yeah? You have done and now you want to distribute to your class. Let's say that all of you are here. All of you are here, yeah? So you have your one notebook here, all your one notebook here. I want to share as a teacher, <clears throat> I want to share what I've done here to you, okay, to you. So every of my student will have the nice thing that I created. It's not so nice, lah, huh? but it's something, lah. okay? So this, this thing I want to share with you, so you have it in your notes. Each of you will have this. So at the moment in your notebook, you cannot view. You cannot view this. Now I want to share this to uh, to each and every of our students. So how we can do it? We can do it easily. Yeah. So you click this 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 um, down arrow here, and then click class notebook. Okay. So now you have some options here. So click this down arrow class notebook. Yeah. Now you have some arrow here. Eh, hey, sorry. You say you have some pages here. So here you have an option. You want to distribute page, or you want to distribute new section, or copy to content library you want to copy the whole thing yeah so i'm going to click this one let's say i want to distribute a new section because maybe in future i will have more pages i want to update so better i distribute a section but if you want to distribute only one page then you can go ahead distribute only one page yeah but in this case i created a section in this section i got two pages so maybe in the future i want to create more page so i will prefer to distribute new section but if you only create one page and you want to distribute only one page, can. 
no problem. Eh? So in this case, let me try to use the as uh, the option of distribute new section. I'm going to click the down here and then distribute new section. Okay, so here you will see that something is circling here. Okay, so new section. I'm going to click one note. Name the new section. Wait, wait a moment. Ah, let me just click this again. Distribute new section. It doesn't appear here. Okay, let me try to open it in the browser. Maybe I'm not the admin. Uh, that's why it doesn't distribute. Because I didn't create this group. So perhaps that's why... Uh, because if you are the one who created the themes, then you can distribute. But I didn't create the themes. Uh, Adec created these themes. So maybe that is the reason why I cannot distribute the, um, the page. It doesn't come out here. Okay, let me just click this. No, 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 it doesn't come out here. Um, Dr. Doni? Yep. Yeah. Uh, perhaps I can do it from my side, is it? Yeah, can you try? Uh, can you try and see it from your side? Let me try to open the browser part. Yeah? Let me see whether I can do it. Sometimes it's a bit technical, this part. Okay, let me try to go here now. Okay, class notebook. Distribute new section. Let's see whether it comes out here. No, it doesn't come out. No, maybe it's because I'm not the admin. Does it doesn't come out? Can you try it, uh, Umo? Do you get it? Can Can you guide me back? Okay, you just go to um, you go to your notebook here. Right. Okay, and then here you have a arrow here, right? Correct. Okay, so click this. You have class notebook. Click class notebook. Okay. You, do you have this option? Distribute page, distribute uh, new section, copy. Do you have this? Uh, hold on. I don't. Class notebook. Uh, I, I already clicked class notebook. Okay. Do you have this option? Distribute page. Right. Okay. Okay. I saw it. Okay. Distribute new section. Yes. So distribute new section, distribute page. Can you click distribute new section, distribute new section? Okay. Do you have it? Uh, it's loading. Okay. Okay, so I need to type a new section, a name. Oh, you don't you don't have that as well. Uh, you, you are supposed to have this page. You are supposed to have this page actually that you can distribute. Do you have it? Can I show you my screen then? Can. Okay, I have this. Yeah, so can you click distribute new section? Right. Yep, yeah. and distribute new section, yep. Yeah. It doesn't come out, eh? Yeah. I'm not sure why. Okay, never mind. Let me just troubleshoot this. Um, uh, maybe you can share back your screen, maybe? Oops, okay. Just a moment now. Okay. Uh, let me just go back to this one. Distribute new page. Let me see what comes out here. Okay, let me try, yeah, let me try, yeah. Um, let me try this and see whether it works, yeah. So I'm going to go to distribute new page. This is the page, right? This is the page that I have. I'm going to try to distribute you this page to each and every one of you in your own notebook, yeah. So in your own notebook, like exam example, Afika's uh, notebook, if I go to handouts, okay, she doesn't have anything. It's empty, yeah, empty. So I'm going to try to distribute this page that I've created into her notebook. So I'm going to go to distribute page. Okay, distribute page. Okay, I'm going to put class notebook. I'm going to click this button distribute. 
here. Okay, so I'm going to click distribute now. Okay, now can I go to Afikas one? Okay, waiting, uh, waiting. So it is, it's distributing. Can you see the loading message here? Distribute to all students class notes in creative online teaching for student engagement notebook. Yeah? So it's, it's loading here. 0% complete. Okay, 17%. So it's loading. So it takes some time. Yeah, Let's see whether it's successful. 35%. <laughs> okay, 53%. 71%. Sometimes it depends on your internet speed. The faster your internet, the, the better it is. Okay, so you have 89. Okay, done. All right, let's go and see Afika's notebook now. So I'm going to click handout. Yeah, so can you see if I click handout? Okay, so are you all able to see this one? If you click class notes, it's here. One note notes is under, if you drop down your name here, you will see under class notes. So this is how I have distributed. So you see Afika has the notes here under class notes here. Now, if I go to next one, maybe Amalina. Okay. And then I click handouts. Eh, sorry, I click uh, class notes. The same tab. Yeah. Now you'll see she also has it. So all of you should actually have the page that I just done. Are you all able to see? Yes. Yeah. All right. So it's under class notes. Yeah. Okay. So this is how you as a teacher, all right, you create a section and then you create a note. And then let's say this is the page I want to distribute. So this is how we do it just now. Distribute page. Okay. So uh, click distribute page and then you distribute. It will appear under the class notes so the students everyone will get um class notes if you click one note notes you'll get the page okay so this is how we do it now this is individual um notes individual lessons that you do yeah you create something here now if you want all of them to go and collaborate online yeah collaborate online and work at the same time this will be the tab collaboration space so if you click this one collaboration space okay now you have a new section you click this one using the collaboration space getting started with collaboration space right now you can add a page so click collaboration space add a page okay so maybe week one week one lesson now this is the part where you can do online class so your students can access this page uh, you as an educator can also access this page so you can even do it according to week you can even do it according to groups. So this is the collaboration space. Collaboration space means you as an educator can view whatever contents is inside here. The students can also view whatever contents is inside here. So they all can work collaboratively online at the same time together. Okay, so this is how we use collaboration space. Content library. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think so. Oh, Umu, I think your mic is on. I think. Okay, let me mute it. All right. So this is how we do it. Yeah. Okay. Where was it just now? Okay. So here, navigation pane, collaboration space is where all of you can come and uh, work at it at the same time. Ah, uh, you see, I've already got few people already trying. Yeah. So some of you have created tutorial one. Some of you have created. Uh, sorry, this is what I created week one. Some of you have created one note collaborate. So this is something that you as an educator and you as your student can create. Everyone can create. So for example, you tell them, okay, um, I want you to do a group work. Now you give them a, an a assignment or presentation. You ask them to do a group work. Go to collaboration space, click a page. So add a page, ask them to title what page or what assignment they want. Uh, like this is example, you've put one note collaboration tutorial one. So now you they can work all about four or five of them this is their their page they can work on this so whatever they type and all this okay then maybe group number two can type whatever they want inside here so now when you want to do a presentation it's very simple you just click the pages here click the pages here click the pages here 
you can navigate within the group. So somebody just created testing. Okay, testing getting started with one node. Huh? So you're testing it. So this is how we create. So here collaboration space, you as an educator can edit. Okay, and the students can also edit. So I can even delete this. Huh? You as a teacher, you can even delete. Okay, they also can delete. So whatever they want to view, can view. So this will be permanently here. It won't be erased. Right, be permanently here. Content library is where you want to upload your own contents. So you as the teacher have access to this. So maybe add page, okay, content library is PowerPoint notes, for example. Okay. So remember PowerPoint notes for uh, week one class. Okay, so now you can even put PowerPoint. So just click insert, file, insert you can even put it as pdf yeah insert file print out or you want to put as file attachment so i'm going to put file attachment i'm going to choose my file so let's say that uh where is my file here okay creative here duh, duh, duh. okay insert or oh, must be less than 19 sorry ah, my file here is very big <laughs> because it got so much picture you also got videos yeah so maybe something that is lesser than 19 mb uh let me try to add in the word file okay let me ah this time okay okay let me try to put here so you can see that the file is already added here so when they click this file they can access it okay this is for uh teacher content only so only the teacher can edit the rest of you can only view it so this is how we can put notes as we go by okay any questions on this so far can follow Dr. Doni, there's some question in the chat area. Yeah, going through it. Okay. Um, everyone in the teams can create class notebook in the group, but unable to distribute. Okay. Uh, Louis, um, only for per team, only you have one class notebook there. Okay. So you as the educator have already created the group and um, you can distribute the page. Okay. So you as the educator can distribute the page. You can distribute the section. Okay, the students is not able to do this. Only you are able to do this. All right. So now let's say that if you have students working on something, let's say you give them an assignment, yeah, and you want them to work on their assignment. Okay. So what you can do is um, ask them to work on their own uh, notebook. So you, for example, Afika, you have um, homework and then you have quizzes here, for example. Right. So they can work within these two. They can work within these two section, and you as a lecturer you can view whatever that they have done okay if it's a quiz you can put it under quiz if it's a assignment or what you can put it under homework right so you as a lecturer you can view what they have done so how do i do it uh, just click class notebook review student work click review student work and you will see something is um, uh, loading here now i'm going to put homework for example click next homework is a section yeah because this is a section under your notebook so click homework next okay now you are able to see okay just a moment huh? it loads okay let me just try put something here so that you are able to see because at the moment is empty so i go to homework okay title page my let's say this is the student doing uh, the doing the homework that you have given them my homework for week one okay this is my homework okay so this is what Aida has done yeah so Aida has done I put here she has typed this is my homework for week one now if you as an educator you can go review student work okay click homework next Okay, so select a page to review. Why it doesn't come out here? I think perhaps uh, it's the limitation that I have because I am not the educator account. So that's why I think there is some limitation. So never mind. Let me just guide you. Click review student work. Okay. Click the tab where they have done the homework is either homework or quizzes so if you click homework click next you are able to see 
uh, each student's name will come out here and the page that they have done. So you can click that and you are able to view all the students. So instead of going through one by one, you can actually view all of it here. All right. But it's just that I'm not the one who uh, I'm not the owner of this account. So that's why there are few limitations. So as you can see, there's few things that I can do. I cannot do same thing as your students. There's few things they can see and few things they cannot do because they are not the uh, owner of the notebook. All right. Uh, sorry, Dr. Donnie. Sorry, yep. may I ask a question? Yeah, about yeah, please, please go ahead. Uh, okay. okay, so, uh, so uh, since you are not an educator, but yeah. uh, you'll be able to create the classroom notebook, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my question is, if what if every student, they have the access to create their own class notebook, would okay. it be like spamming the teams later? Because it appears to, to become a specific tab on top of the team's um, layout, right? Yeah, yeah. Would it, would it be a problem? In um, yes, there will be a potential problem because you see they can continue um, setting up class notebooks as you go. But maybe you can let your students know that only one notebook is required. Uh, so that within that one notebook, you have that one section where all of you can collaborate together. So this will be one of the limitations that we have. Lah. All right, I see. Thank okay. you. Uh, but let me see if there's any other way that we can disable the uh, OneNote notebook that is only accessible by uh, one person. Uh, at the moment, we don't have that function yet. Okay, Suba, collaboration space is like forum in UM Spectrum. Yes, correct. So collaboration space is exactly like forum. So you instead of creating a one by one forum, you only have one page you can create by page exactly. OK, and um, OK, let me see. Oops, I think the thing has jumped. OK, let me see any indicators. OK, collaborative. OK, that's one. I have a similar problem as Umu just now. There's no ribbon to distribute page insert. I need to open one note isolated. OK, please assist. Um, Aisha, what do you mean, uh, Aisha? Distribute page. Uh, Maybe Aisha, can you did, try? Uh, just now that Umu uh, shows you the the one that uh, we have a re ribbon function, kan, bawah tu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yang yeah, insert, uh, untuk distributed page, semua tu kan. Uh, saya dekat dalam, kalau saya buka guna Teams tu, dia tak keluar. Saya kena buka OneNote yang asing punya... Uh, panggil apa ni? Apps, apps, apps punya uh, browse punya OneNote tu baru baru ada yang <laughs> untuk insert distribute distribute uh, sorry yang ni lah yang kita jawab kan yang okay. untuk distribute page tu. Understood. 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 So okay, uh, I will suggest that in case you have faced uh, any potential technical problem like this ah, uh, um, you can always take this outside of Teams. But whatever that you do will still be captured within Teams. So you click open in browser. OK, and then um, it's either open in browser or open in desktop app. So you can click open in browser here. All right. It's a bigger version. It's a bigger version. So whatever that you edit inside here can also be accessible in Teams. So this is the bigger version. OK, and usually this is more stable. Uh, the online version, the browser version is more stable than the actual application itself. OK. So let me see. Yeah, OK, let me review student work. Let me see whether it works here. And now it's going to work. No, it's still it's not available. OK, so maybe uh, you can try it at your own pace. Yeah, um, um, it should be available if you are the creator of the notebook because you're reviewing students work. You're reviewing students' work, so it should be available. In this case, I'm not the creator, so there is some limitations. Uh, sorry, not the creator. I created the notebook, but I don't own the account, so that's the problem. So uh, you have some limitations there. Okay, so I think um, one final thing about uh, Microsoft OneNote is the ability to also do some hand-drawn. Yeah, so if, for example, you go to ins uh, draw. OK, and you can even draw your own notes. So those of you who like drawing, for example, you can even draw. Yeah? So you can highlight some notes here, for example. OK, and you have different kind of highlighters. You've got green, you've got yellow. OK, and then you have some pencils. So if you want to write something, you want to draw something, you can also draw. So it's very useful for us who are teaching. Lah. 
uh, those of you who need some application and you need to draw and teach and show some students okay you can just put a picture here maybe you make it a bit big okay and then you can start drawing on it so that they can understand so it's a bit more user friendly uh, it's much more easier for students to follow especially those of you who are teaching formulas and using mathematics okay so i'm done with microsoft uh, one note uh, do you all have any other further questions on this we are going to go to the last module uh, microsoft suite okay no questions yeah okay if there's no questions let's go to the last module okay so this morning we are going to also venture on this new um, a new software uh, called microsoft sway yeah so microsoft sway um, is so is so interesting and is so nice that when students start to use microsoft sway they forgot about powerpoint already they no more using powerpoint so most of my students when i introduce microsoft sway when i teach them how to use microsoft sway um, they have forgotten how to use Microsoft PowerPoint because Sway is able to do everything, right? And what does Sway able to do? Let me just show you a video, yeah? What is the capability of Sway? Okay, and then we will do a little bit more hands-on. Okay, let me just include computer sound. All right. Okay, let's see a video, yeah, about Microsoft Sway. The way that I would see success in using technology in schools goes beyond just using the technology. We've been in small bits trying to push out Office apps to students to be able to use. And it was a post online that I had seen that said, check out this new software. And it was Sway. A new, exciting, dynamic way to present information. You hear this little murmur in the background, like, I've never seen that. What is it? He's just sliding through. There's a video built in. And so there were a lot of just nuances to it that made it really exciting to share with others. It's a really powerful tool for synthesizing or comparing ideas because students have so much flexibility in the layout. It gives them a chance to individualize their thoughts and yet follow um, a curriculum base. We've used Sways for business. We've used Sways for English comp finals. In fact, we have a group of seniors, one group of seniors today that are delivering their thesis in Sway. Pretty much whenever I have an opportunity to use Sway for a presentation within class, I would definitely use Sway because it's my go-to just because it's so much easier to use than many other presentation software and because you can get things done so much quicker. I'm able to put together a presentation in maybe 30 minutes or an hour so I can really focus on my delivery rather than what people will be looking at on the screen because I know Sway's got it covered. That's the type of comment that we want to hear from students because then they're focusing more on content and they're learning that content because they're spending less time on the design. Having students share or collaborate on a Sway is so easy. We have shown it to students who have never used it before, and in minutes they're sharing with their peers and working together on the same active document. Well, I love that it's cloud-based, so I can access it from anywhere. I can pull it up on my phone from another computer. If my phone dies, I can use someone else's phone, someone else's computer. As we move towards one-to-one -to -one technology for our student population, Sway seems to provide that opportunity to stretch their thinking, to use some, and feel like it will give them an edge as they move into a college or university. Okay, so that is a little bit overview about Microsoft Sway. Yeah? So you can see that some of the functions that was done, yeah? some of the functions that was done, uh, you can see how that they use Microsoft Sway to collaborate in classrooms. Yeah? Okay, so maybe at the, uh, this one, I will go a little bit slow on Microsoft Sway because I see that the percentage of um, who have not used Sway is quite high uh, among this group this morning. Yeah? So this one, maybe I'll go a little bit slow uh, we will do a little bit more hands-on step by step I will show you and then hopefully by the end of this uh, session this morning 
some of you can share some of the sways that you have created uh, from this morning. Yeah? So I will go through one by one. Uh, I'll go through slowly. Then maybe after this, apart from the sway that I will create um, and showing you step by step, uh, maybe you can do at your own pace and then we share what is the kind of sway that you have. Yeah. All right. So let's look at um, some of the uh, functionality of sway. Yeah. So sway lets you as an educator and students to focus on the content not so much worry about the format. What it means by this is sometimes students spend so much time about uh, what is the right font size, the color, and then uh, what backdrop, what design, you know, what things to put in. So sometimes a lot of time goes into the formatting rather than the content. Microsoft Sway helps you to design um, the formatting. They, it will take care of the formatting part. You will just have to focus on the input. Just put all the contents you want and Sway will take care of the formatting. So what is the right font size, the color, uh, the, the, the background, the design, everything will be done by Sway. Right? So we will look into this. Yeah. So in Sway, you can also uh, use it exactly like a PowerPoint. You can write text, you can show images, video. Um, and then here, I also have attached some examples how um, Sway has been used in classrooms around the world. Um, we will also practice how to create our own sway now and also we will understand how we can use sway in a variety of ways. So as part of this PowerPoint, I've also attached some examples, yeah, some examples of how uh, we can use uh, Microsoft Sway. Um, it's a digital storytelling, yeah, so um, those who are doing thesis presentation, uh, the proposal defense, candidature defense, seminar one, two, viva. They, I also have seen students especially uh, using um, Sway yeah? and also in classroom presentation, as I mentioned, they are no longer using PowerPoint, they are using Sway once they know about it. So these are some examples how we can use uh, Microsoft Sway as part of the presentation. Yeah? So I give you some examples and also there is some link. Step one to step nine step-by-step -step guidance on how to use Microsoft Suite. So in case you miss any of the steps here and you like a recap, um, apart from the recording that is available, <coughs> you have step one to step nine yeah, that you can um, refer to. Okay, and I also have attached some sample suites here. So sample one and sample two. If you click, for example, this sample, let me just show you how does uh, Microsoft Suite look like. So if I click one sample, yeah, so you can see that how nice is it? How to turn a teacher ninja into a one note ninja. Ah, so you can see this is an example of a sway. How is it done? Yeah. So I'm going to just scroll down. I'm just going to scroll down. So the journey begins. So you can see there is a notes here. There's a note and there's a picture. You can put the notes beside the picture. All right. And then here you can have different, different. So you can even click this and you can go straight into the content. Right. If you don't want to click, then you can exit out. So you can have a different layout, the picture. And then you can make it a bit big if you want to emphasize on something. You have some picture. You can easily integrate videos. You can put four videos into one and also put a caption underneath the video so people know uh, what this video means and what is the caption about. Okay, and then here you have many, many things and you can go on. Yeah, So you can even click uh, different stacks like this. You can have it even different pictures like this. You can show as you present. So this is the power of Microsoft Sway. You can see that is a uh, is quite an interesting presentation not just the boring uh, powerpoint style yeah? so you can vary uh, different different uh, videos pictures text design everything is done by microsoft suite okay so let's look into i give you an example of sway here okay so that you can sway your students huh? you can sway your students on um, how to use uh, microsoft sway later on so first thing to access microsoft sway uh, you have to go to your Microsoft Office 365 and um, access through here. So you have Sway. Okay. So can we all do it together? Maybe at the end of the session, let's see some examples of Microsoft Sway. Yeah? So go to uh, Microsoft Office, click Sway. Okay. So now I'm into Sway here, Microsoft Sway. Yeah. All right, so now you have this page here. Click New Blank Sway. Okay, New Blank Sway. Okay, so now you have your Sway ready here. All right, 
So you have your background, your title. Can follow ah, so far. <laughs> okay. Maybe put maybe put a uh, uh, wait. Let me put a comment here in the chat. Can follow so far. Okay. Can follow so far. Maybe put a thumbs up to that comment. <laughs> so far. Okay. Go to Microsoft. Yeah. Go to Microsoft online and access Sway. Yeah. Okay. I put a comment. Can you follow so far? Okay, one person, two person. <laughs> How about the rest of you? Can follow so far? Okay, only two. Ah. The rest of you, what happened? <laughs> Bagus. <laughs> okay, so can follow. Ah. Okay, let me go back to Microsoft Sway. Okay, so now you have your Microsoft Sway here, right? So now let's do the sway together, yeah? So this is what we call the um, the heading card, the heading card. So the heading card is basically like your title, the title of your sway. So what you want to title this, okay? So put a title of your sway. So uh, maybe now I want to put the heading card is, uh, who, who am I? Who am I? Okay, let's say I want to do a presentation of who am I, okay? So now, after you have created, uh, put the text here, who am I? You want to create three heading cards, okay? So how do I create three heading cards? Click the plus, and then click three heading cards. So you can see heading, yeah? Plus, heading, plus, heading. So heading one, now I want to add another heading, heading one, and I want to add another heading, heading one. So I have three headings, yeah? One, two, and three. This is the title of my suite. Okay. Can follow? Can, huh? all right. Yes, bagus. All right. So now, my title of my suite is who am I? Now, I want to change the background, yeah? You can put a picture. So I'm going to click this picture, and I'm going to put a picture. So here, for example, you can search search in sources or if you already have a picture you can upload it in my device so click my device you can upload the picture all right otherwise you can already search for sources so maybe for search for sources i'm going to put um you can even type who am i let's see what comes out looking for suggestion so this one when you type who am i is searching in the bing search engine not google huh? bing search engine so if i click who am i here are some suggestions of some pictures you can choose. So I'm going to choose maybe this picture. Okay. And then I'm going to click add. Right. So now you can notice that a picture has been added beside my title. Who am I? Now I have created other three cards here. I'm going to title each of these cards. Okay. So maybe where do I live? Okay. The second heading, yeah? Okay. Next one. What do I love? Okay. And then next one. The last one. What have I learned? All right. So you have three headings here, yeah? Where do I live? What do I love? What have I learned? Okay, so now you can also um, insert some images, yeah? Where do I live? You can also insert some images here. So maybe click this, okay? And then search for an image here. Um, maybe you can put a condominium. No need to be your exact house, lah. Okay. Condominium, uh, maybe a house of a condominium. Okay, maybe I like this, 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 this picture. Okay, so I'm going to click add. Okay, so where do I live? This one. Now, what do I love? You can also create a, a picture of what do I love here. So if you have more than one pictures, you can also do that. Uh, maybe here, what do I love? Maybe let me just put a, a heart shape, for example, as an icon for this heading. Yeah. So what do I love? Okay, so maybe I'm going to create here. Okay, now, what do I love? Maybe you have more than one thing. 
uh, maybe you want to create many things. So what do I do is click this plus sign here and then put images. Insert image card. So I'm going to put one image card here. So what do I love? So I love eating burgers. Ah. So now you can click an image here. Put an image of a burger here. Click the image. Put burger. Up to you lah. You, you can do whatever that you feel um, you like for your sway. So for example, I'm, I love eating burger. So I'm going to put a burger picture here. Right. Now the next one is maybe I have more than one thing. Ah. What do I love? Maybe I want to put other things. Okay. So maybe I create another image card. Plus image card. Okay, I love my dog. Ah, love my dog. <coughs> so now you can put a picture of your dog here. If you have a picture of your dog, you can put a drop down here. My device. Upload. Otherwise, you can just search it online here. Okay, so maybe um, let me look for a dog picture here. My dog picture. Ah, something like this. Lah. Not exactly like this, but something like this. Okay, let me put add. Okay, love my dog. Okay, so maybe next one, you want to add another one, another picture. Well, what else do you want? I love eating. I love, and then maybe I love reading books. So you click the image here, sign for books. Okay, so they have a picture of books here. So I'm going to put add. All right, so now under what do I love? I have three items that I'm expressing what do I love. One, two, and three. Okay. Can follow so far? Maybe you want to put in the chat. Okay, so now under the Microsoft here, where do I live? Eh, sorry, this one, who am I? I want to give a brief description yeah, of who am I. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the plus sign and I'm going to put some text here. Okay, plus sign and click some text. So now text is maybe you can put who, who you are. Okay, so I'm Donny Adams. I work at the University of Malaya. I'm is at the Faculty of Education. Okay, Donny Adams, I work at so you can type some biodata. Okay, so where do I live? You can also type uh, a little bit of description here. Put a text here. Where do I live? Okay, so I live at section 17, Taling Jaya. Okay, for example, lah. okay, and then what do I love? Okay, I love eating burgers. So you already have your um, descriptions here. Okay, wow, you're all putting some stickers here. Huh? Yes. So we know Tini has put some, this one can follow, yes, yes, okay. All right, good. So if now, if you want to see how is your sway shaping up, yeah? You want to see how your sway shaping up, just go to play. Click play here. So you can see the play button, click play. Okay, now you can see how your sway is shaping up, something like this. Who am I? You have the title, you have the picture. Okay, now if I, I rotate to the side here, you can see there's two arrows here, yeah? Or if your mouse has the, the, the scroll button, uh, you can scroll using your mouse also. So you scroll using your mouse. Okay, so here there's some description. Uh, I work at where? Okay, so where do I live? So I have a picture here. I live at section 17, PJ. And then if I scroll here, what do I love? I love eating burger. I love my dog. I love reading books. Okay, and then what have I learned? Is so far empty. All right. So now if you, you want to edit, just click the edit button. Right. So now you can even cluster these three things together. So you have the picture. You can even cluster the three things together. How do I cluster? 
um, you can even make it big. Yeah? If you find this, okay, first let's talk about the size. If the size is too small, you this is how we evaluate the size. This is the smallest, this is medium, this is big. So let's say if this is a bit too small just now, I can make it big. So I click this big. Okay, maybe I make this big and then I click this big. Okay, so I have three big things here now, right? So now if I go and play again. Okay, where do I live? Okay, uh, what do I love? So you see, now it comes out very big. Ah, so the burger comes out, then the dog picture comes out, and then the books. And you see there's captions here. Yeah? I love reading books. Uh, I love my dog. And then I love burgers. So this is how we can navigate. Okay. Will there be speaker's note? Uh, Saja, what, what, what do you mean? Uh, the slides, is it? Do you mean the slides? Yeah, I will share the slides after this. Oh, I, I think if in a PowerPoint, you have the speaker's view where you can put uh, any script that you want. Right, right. So you're talking about presenter view, is it? Or the, oh, yes, yes, the presenter the view. Okay, this one, no, we don't have that. This one, no, we don't have. So this is the way you put the description. So for example, if you play, um, this is where the description, so the description all comes here. Yeah, you don't have a, a separate like PowerPoint, you have a, a notes that you can put at the bottom there, for example, or presenter view where uh, you can anticipate what comes next. Uh, we don't have that. Okay, so Microsoft Sway is more like a, a 3D-ish 3D uh, kind of a presentation. Now you can even group this, yeah? So I have one picture here, I can have one picture here and I have three pictures. So let's say I want to cluster this together under what do I love? I want to cluster it together. So I just select this, okay, and then click this um, tick here. One, two, and three. So you can cluster this together, okay, and then you put it under group. So you have group here, group. Okay, so group you can decide what kind of uh, pattern you want. You want to put it as tag, or you want to put it as grid, you want to put it as slideshow, you can put. So usually the famous one is tag. So if I click tag and I click play, okay, now let's see how it comes out. So if I go next, uh, now you see it comes out like this. So you can say, okay, I love burgers. Okay, I love my dog. Then I love reading books. So this is how we can uh, emphasize. Huh? So if you want to click and go even further, you can even do that. Right? Otherwise, it appears like this. One, two, three. So you just have to click on the pictures and it rotates as it is. All right? You can even insert YouTube yeah, if you want. So for example, now if I go down, um, I love reading books. You can even insert YouTube. So you press the plus sign. Okay? Now you have images, then you have um, plus sign, you have images, then you can even upload. So you even have videos here. You even have videos here. So you can even upload uh, videos as part of your sway. So for example, let me just click uh, text here and put a video here. Click add. There you can see there's a video that has been added here. So now if I go to the play button and go back to where it is just now, so you can see that I have a picture here of what do I love and I also have a, a video button. So you, you don't need to go to Microsoft, uh, you don't have to go to YouTube, yeah? you don't have to go to YouTube or, or, or you know sometimes in PowerPoint you have the difficulty of playing straight from the video. Um, here you can even play straight. Here. Up until like last year, the last time I You can even play the video straight away from here. And okay, you want to make it full screen, also you can make it full screen. And then you can play the video. So this is how um, easy it is to present using uh, Microsoft Swing. Okay? Can follow so far? Um, my Sway goes top down when I click play. How to make it like your sites to site? Okay, uh, this one, yeah, I'm coming to it, uh, Dr. Ng, yeah? I'm coming to it. Okay, so this is how we do it now. Let's say you click uh, play, all right? And you go to the settings. 
change settings of this way. Click the gear. Okay. Now you can even change the layout. So this is going side to side. So if you have top down, for example, so if I click top down, then I'm scrolling top down like this. So if your settings is already top down, it's like this. But now if I want to change side to side, click the gear and click side to side. So now it's going to go side to side like this. So this is how we uh, change the setting. Okay, from side to side to top down. Okay, so you can change that. You can change um, as you want. All right, so let's go to the last session here. What have I learned? Okay, what have I learned? So maybe let's put some picture. What have I learned? Okay, so lessons learned. Maybe I put a picture here, lessons learned. Okay, so maybe here is the part where you can put what have I learned. Click a um, insert content card here and then put a text here. All right, so now maybe what have I learned? Maybe you can put I have learned how to use Microsoft Suite. is very interesting and captivating i will surely use microsoft Sway for future presentations and encourage my students to explore okay so something like this what have i learned yeah so what have i learned so now if i go to play so if i go to what i've just entered in what have i learned lessons learned okay so i have some reflection here you can type something what you have learned okay can follow so far Okay, now um, if we go back to Microsoft Sway, okay, when you click the play design here, um, you might not like the designs here. Eh? So maybe you find that it's a bit boring. Lah. Maybe you don't like the designs here. So one way you can do is you click design. So you see at the uh, top here, design, click design. Okay, <clears throat> so now when you click design, click styles. Okay, click design, click styles. So now you will have many other options here. So maybe you want to change this heading to this heading. Can you see all the color has now changed to black and white? Okay, so you want to change this or maybe you want to change it to this heading. Okay, so you can see the font size has changed. Uh, the presentations has changed a bit or you want to change it to this heading. Okay. So you can customize as you want. What have I learned? Right? And then you have many, many other options here. You can customize the um, alphabet of the fonts, for example, or you want to customize the background of it also. So now you notice that I've added some nice background, a bit flowerish at the, at the background. So you can customize the background as you want. Okay, you have many, many options here. You can choose. Okay, so you can even choose like this. So you notice that a lot of these a lot of improvements from the previous boring version now you can even choose this but let's say that um, earlier one of the highlights for microsoft sway was um, okay one of the highlights for microsoft sway was that the ability for you to focus on the contents and not worry so much about the format so one thing you can do is click sway a design 
and then click remix you see there's a remix here so you just click remix microsoft sway will automatically design the sway for you so you can see if i click remix it's already designed if you don't like this you can always click remix again so i click remix again now you notice that it's a different design now it's top down okay so if you don't like it you can continue clicking remix until you come to a design where you like okay for example this is a new design if i click remix again okay so maybe this design now ah uh, see this is a bit more uh, perhaps you like it uh, it's more better to your taste so you can play and you can see how does the design look like okay so you can continue remixing it uh, microsoft sway will adjust accordingly for you so for example like this now if i play then you can see that it goes to left to right so it's all arranged the background the font size is all done for you right and if you are not happy about it you can always customize it according to your own liking and then it will go back to that so this is what is nice about microsoft suite so you can focus really on the content rather than worry about the um, design of the microsoft suite okay and then one thing final thing for you to um, also bear in mind you can also share you can also share the sway yeah so if you click share okay now you have three option specific people those in your organization that means um, those who have um365 account or anyone with a link right so uh, your students and yourself have um365 students have the siswa one so you can even put this those in your organization with the link now you can even copy this link and share it um, into spectrum for example or share it um, into microsoft teams for example now you can even link yeah you can even link uh, whatever that you have done to microsoft teams so i just click this right and then if i go to microsoft teams here i just click the plus sign here Okay, then you have, um, let me try to find, oh, sorry, Sway is not here. So you can put website, click website. Okay, then you can put Sway presentation. Then you just paste the URL here. Click save. Okay, now you see there's a new tab came out here, Sway presentation. So once you sign in, you will be able to see the Microsoft Sway, the presentation. Okay, can follow? Ah, wow, somebody has already created. Shuba, you have created this, is it? <laughs> Micro evaluation of humans. Wow, very nice. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, uh, yes, wow, wonderful. So, let's see. Uh, this is what Shuba has created her own sway, yeah? Micro evaluation of humans. Okay, so you have this one from primitive to the advanced one. Okay, evidence of human. Okay, so what you have created so far, adaptation. So text, yeah? So you have a mixture of text and then pictures. Okay, how about the rest of you? Would you like to share? What sway have you created? So we see Suba has created, uh, shared a sway. How to share is simple. Just click share. Okay, go to a Microsoft sway. Click share okay those in your organization with the link and then copy copy this one and go into the chat box here and then you can paste into the chat box here then you can see the sway that was created sorry donny i missed the part where after the heading yeah the title how to create the next section Can. so this is the heading card if you click the heading card you click the plus sign there you go plus sign here click then heading so you got few options here yeah so if you want to put some heading and uh, couple it with the text and all this just put heading so this is when you click heading you will get three heading cards like this all right thanks okay Okay, how about the rest? Will you like to share your sway? 
I think more or less I've already come to the end. Okay. Hi, um, Dr. Donny Sway is cool. How about audio can record? Okay, uh, let me go back to Sway. All right. So if you want to insert an audio, click the plus sign. Okay. And then go to media and click audio. Insert audio card. Okay. Yeah, I is uh J Jamie, are you are you okay? Are you following? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So let me go back, huh? Click the plus sign. You have few here. Text, media, group. So now I want to click media. And then you can insert a video, you can insert an audio, or you want to upload any YouTube video or, or any of the uh, audio you want you have mp3 or video you can also upload otherwise you can choose from here so if you want to choose an audio click audio all right then you get an audio card here you click record here so you click record then you are able to record so once you record then the audio file will appear here understand that's great thank you so much all right no problem so thank you now i have a bit of confidence wow I've got audio um, and video cool sway <laughs> okay is there a time limit for audio recording uh not that i know of dr Ng. i i don't think there is a time limit but one thing that um you might want to take note of uh, quite important is microsoft powerpoint is that you can have the physical file uh, the microsoft powerpoint in your desktop you can have it in your hard disk you can have it in your pen drive and you can even have it in cloud right but microsoft sway um, you can only have it in cloud so what does that mean if you do not have an internet connection you're not able to open your microsoft suite so you need an internet connection whereas microsoft powerpoint if you have the file ready then you can open it you don't need an internet connection right but microsoft suite you need an internet connection in order to open the suite so that is the one of the limitations for microsoft suite all right so just bear in mind if you do a microsoft suite and you go to any conferences or what you want to present please ensure that you have an internet connection otherwise you're not able to access your uh, microsoft suite uh hi dr donny yeah yeah mm -hmm. um you does Sway have like a timer function or features like you know after a few seconds it's out to go to the next um, yeah. yes yes there is there is um right, so okay i click play right okay then this gear thing all right here auto play ah uh, all right okay so meaning if we set like five seconds so after five seconds it will automatically yeah. go to the next um page correct 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 okay. and it also it has a, a ability to loop let's say that if you already finish and you want it to go back to number one then you okay. can loop so it's quite useful for conference lah uh, you have right. a lot of pictures and all this uh, and then finish displaying or you have a video you have so many uh, videos uh, and you want need to loop finish playing a video go to the next one next one once it's finished you can also loop and you also have a timer here okay so it's quite useful for conferences lah. but just make sure you must have internet connection you don't have internet connection then you have problem yeah uh, Dr. Ng, any issues with learners from China? Um, I do have students in uh, from China in my class. They have something called VPN. Uh, VPN where they can bypass um, access to Google. Yeah? So they can access um, Google, they can access Microsoft, right? So they have VPN where they can bypass. So I, I think they are able to do that. They are, it's not really a big problem. So maybe you can ask them, Dr. Ng, on the VPN, whether they can uh, activate the VPN. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. No problem, Suba. Okay, let's see some. I think there's some uh, samples here. Uh, let's see Dr. Vinotini's one. She has done. Okay, so welcome, teacher stock teaching and learning consultation by faculty of medicine, e learning. Okay, so are you facing challenges? All right, so there is some um, text here. What areas of online teaching? Okay, and then you have some yeah very nice you have a uh, uh, tiles here and who will you journey with okay very nice you have dr vino picture here all right and then when would you like to start 
nice and then some of the services okay and then click here for booking very nice okay so this is one way lah, that you can do uh microsoft sway excellent any other samples okay i think dr saja has also shared yeah her sway okay let's see all oh, right online teaching using sway wow <laughs> okay so here you have um okay staying away after this swaying away swaying away, swaying away after this very nice caption great session thanks okay nice grateful okay nice any other examples that you all have and there was one session which i did uh for uh, one of the institutions are uh, very nice the teacher actually uh, as part of the training the teacher actually developed a module about uh, bakery yeah uh. so uh, bakery got a lot of a food picture lah, a lot of food so that time also was near to lunch hours so that food made all of us a bit hungry lah, after that so we all have to you know finish fast fast and go and eat um, that that food lah, we have right so this is also during lunch hours so yeah coming to lunch hours okay any one of you would like to still share um maybe your sway your, the sway that you have done so in the meantime let me show you another example of a sway just now i showed you the ninja one so now I show you another example of a sway. Okay, so this is another example. Welcome to our holiday concert. Okay, so this is an, uh, another example by sway, holiday concert. Yeah. So you have a picture here, you have a title, you have the text. Okay, and then you have how did you become a better musician? So you have a background picture with a text over it. Okay, so you have text, 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 text. Okay, so it's some kind of storyline and suddenly in between there's a nice picture here and then you have some text okay all the way then you have some picture here okay not as attractive as the first sample i showed you lah, but it can be like a storybook it can be like a diary so this is like a, a digital diary that the person has done okay so you have a uh, this one here what was the challenges and all this okay so you have all this so you have a picture here so not very clear but you know it's like a digital storybook lah. so it's something that you can access um on your own as well okay let me see uh, now you also have the ability uh, if you press these three dots here you also have an ability that if you want to print this way out so if you click the print um you can create a pdf out of the uh, microsoft sway that you have just done okay so maybe you want to keep it for documentation sake lah. Uh, maybe you want to show that you're teaching and learning kpi or you want to create a teaching academic portfolio okay you can also uh, print the sway out so for example like this all right you can even print it out um, and save it as a pdf okay for the uh, documentation sake okay any other examples or sway would you like to share? I'm more or less coming to the end ready. Okay, if is there any other issues? Is there anything else you like to discuss? Any any other issues? So as part of uh, part two, yeah, I will share this PowerPoint to all of you later. As part of part two, uh, this will be our session for part two, yeah. So this one we will be looking at how to uh, best practices for assignment and quiz. Uh, one of the cool features for this is the usage of Microsoft Forms. How to use Microsoft Forms to create um, good assignment? How to create quiz? How to do flipped classroom using Microsoft? Um, um forms okay so my flip classroom is students uh, study at your own pace um, um, at whatever time they are and classroom time face to face time is dedicated to discussions yeah so they read all uh, or they see uh, flip classroom is they read at their own pace whatever materials or videos or what and then classroom time is dedicated for discussion so um here we will cover that flip classroom and best practices for assignment and quiz for part two we will also be looking at what are some of the other online collaboration tools, some best practices on online learning and um, engagement with students. So this one, um, I actually have um, close to about 
20 over tools yeah and i also have a, a website where i will share uh, with all of you where you have one website where you have all the tools ready what are the kind of tools for presentation what are the kind of tools for um, 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 uh, quiz what are the kind of tools for assignments and all this so everything is there is a one-stop platform yeah and i will also demonstrate how to actually use so we all will have a hands-on i'll give you the link you can go and play with it and then later on i will can show you how it's actually done this is about close to 20 applications yeah so that is another very cool feature for that part two yeah okay um so if you all are interested in that part two uh, maybe you can uh, let um umu know so umu is here okay and a few of the attack teams are here so if you are interested in part two uh, we can have that part two part two won't take long yeah? part two maybe about uh, two hours two hours we will have part two Okay, so if you are interested in that, that will be really bang on on uh, student engagement. I, I I even can change the appearance, you know. I can put a nice moustache here and all this, you know, and I put a cowboy head. <laughs> so you can even change your appearance and there's so much more. So much more you can do. I can show you on that. Huh? There's uh, so much more you can do. All right, I can show you on that part. Okay, so if you are interested, uh, maybe you can put in the uh comments here or maybe you can email to miss umu um edek umu can have your email uh. umu, maybe you want to put your email here uh okay uh dr Randy, can you just wrap up then i'll, I'll give the announcement okay all right all right so i wrap up and then maybe miss umu will take it from there yeah okay um so any final questions any any other feedback before we end today's session and i hand over to miss umu because I think Miss Umu also has some announcement to make, some feedback and all this. Okay, so if there is no further announcement, I just type my email here, uh, donnyadams at um.edu.my. So this is my email address. Um, in case you all like to bounce some ideas and maybe you want to discuss some things about uh, online teaching and all this, uh, feel free to email me. Yeah? Um, I will just share the little that I know to all of you. And I'm sure that I will also learn um, in the same um, pace as well. Yeah. Okay, so we all are in this new uh, new normal. Okay, let's try to support and uh, help each other as best as we can. And also very much thank you to EDEC and also Miss Umu for inviting uh, and giving the opportunity for me to share this uh, contents to all of you. Okay, so I hope the last few hours was beneficial and uh, hopefully we can have a part two. All right, so thank you everyone for your time. Really appreciate. Thank you for joining this session online. Yeah. Okay, so over to you, uh, Ms. Umu. All right. Uh, thank you everyone for the session today. Thank you to, to Donny. So I hope uh, you did gain some new knowledge and skills or an enhanced one. Um, Okay, uh, first of all, I really would love for you to fill up the feedback form that we have so that we can know what kind of training that you need for the future and even to improve our training and services in upcoming months. Okay, uh, second of all, if you are wondering about part two, uh, it will be... Uh, run on 16 February but the announcement has not come out yet once the announcement come out I will even provide you the link to register um, okay and third of all if any of you would like to join our e-learning clinic uh, please do so if you can't find the link you can uh, whatsapp me or email to edit and we'll provide you the link um, as you can see I already put the contact number uh, you can either email to edit at um.edu.my or our phone number is 011-2055-0569. You can WhatsApp or call to us. Um, anything regarding training um, or um, if you need any um, advice on how to run your online teaching and learning classes. Alright, thank you everyone. Miss Umu, can we take a photo, a group photo or something? Sure, sure. Um, can can everyone turn on their video that <laughs> camera? So maybe we can take a nice group photo or what, and then and, and, and show show to everyone. Oh, okay, I can see. Yeah, Doctor Saja can show, can see you all.
Dr. Jamie is there also. Dr. Jamie, maybe you want to tilt back the camera. Maybe it's not really focusing on yourself. Ah, maybe just a little bit up. Ah, just tilt a bit. Yes, yes, wonderful. Nice. Dr. Aisha, maybe you have to tilt a little bit down. Yes, wonderful. Okay, and then Suba is there. Um, those of you, okay, let, let me, let me, I know it's a, a, a little bit, just want to share with you all a little bit uh, on this before, before we end, yeah. Uh, those of you perhaps who are uh, uh, feeling a little bit challenged on adjusting your camera, you want to see how you look like. Uh, so what you can do is, you know, when we have Windows 10, uh, this is what I do. Uh, usually what I do before I come live, uh, before I show my face. Yeah. So what you can do is your search bar at the bottom here. You see, I have a search bar. Okay, just click here. Okay, and then you type camera. C-A-M-E-R-A, -A, camera. This will activate your um uh, computer camera so you just click camera it will activate the camera so here you can use the camera and position yourself so you, it looks like uh, before you eventually on your camera into your microsoft teams so you can know whether it's too up or too down because you don't want to start and then start adjusting the camera okay are we ready to take a group photo Uh, is that all? <laughs> okay, okay, hold on. Dr. Rosiana is coming online. How about the, um, you like to turn on your camera, uh, then we can take a nice group. Dr. Ng, where is Dr. Ng? I know I'm familiar with Dr. Ng also. I think if you, Dr. Vinodini also, what happened? <laughs> Alright, okay, smile. All right, I captured a few already, so I will share with you guys soon. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.